Good morning. I'm Emily D. Baker. We are live to cover day 14 of the Johnny Depp Amber Heard case. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen as everyone's walking into the courtroom while we say our good mornings and hi, how you doings. And don't forget to do the YouTube, like and subscribe things, all of that. But I like seeing the parties come in. Court starts in about six minutes, but I do enjoy seeing everybody come in. The mics are off in court. We're going to address some of the things going on around the internet this morning. You guys are the greatest law nerds. You are the best. Thank you for tagging me in so many things across Instagram. Oh, it literally just binged. It binged. It binged. At 261, we haven't even rolled the intro yet. People were coming in hot this morning for cross-examination of Dr. Don Hughes. It is going to be, hey, go, no, back to our camp. Yes, thank you. It is going to be an interesting morning after yesterday's cross. So let me tell you a little bit about what happened yesterday and um, address some of the things that happened around the internet. Around the interwebs, I saw a lot of um, back and forth about whether Herd's legal team were passing notes to their PR guy. They're allowed to give whatever they want to their PR guy. They are allowed to give him anything that is not sealed, protected, or not for the public. He is part of the team, so they can pass him bullet points to have him uh, put out to the media and things like that. He cannot be using his phone in court, and I've seen that happen numerous times. Uh, did you see Depp greet the deputies? Always, always nice when people greet those doing security, I think. Also, I saw a lot of discussion about these notes of Dr. Dawn Hughes. As you will remember yesterday on the stand, she was reading her notes. But your honor, it's just, it's just a post-it. It's a post-it, your honor. It wasn't a post-it. It was a large stack of reports and papers. Some of them went into a folder and were covered up um, on the stand as she was testifying. And we will see um, what of those were turned over. Maybe, maybe not, depending on if it becomes a discovery issue. She was supposed to turn over the notes that the uh, Depp's team, legal team, did not have yet. Whether she did or didn't, they were all standing up at the witness stand going through them. I'm confident that the attorneys for Depp's legal team will make sure that they got everything that they thought they didn't have. I am not worried about her playing hide the ball any further on this. So it is May the 4th. May the 4th be with you. I'm rocking my Star Wars shirt. You might not be able to see it here. Yes, I'm a giant nerd. Yes, one of my tattoos is a Star Wars tattoo. It's a great day. We're going to do all the things. Let's roll the intro and then talk a little bit more about Dr. Don Hughes. You see um, counsel for Depp already ready. He's like, I'm ready for cross. Let's just go. I'm not even sitting down. Let's not sit down. Let's not sit down. Let's not. Let's roll it and let's get into it. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being law nerds. A huge thank you to our mods who keep this chat the greatest place to be on the internet. Remember, we don't name call people. We talk about what we're seeing. We talk about what we are experiencing. We talk about the testimony, but we don't disparage name call and harass. And that's one of the things the mods are strongest about here. Also, when the chats get busy, Google will hold comments and we don't always get to unblocking them. So if it gets swooped by Google, Google isn't always on my same page with the cursey words and apologies for that. I will be trying to get to all of the super chats. If I miss a few, my apologies, just know that it's possible. Um, we got over 41,000 in the chat yesterday and it does go really fast. <laughs> so let us go ahead and roll the intro so everyone knows who we are and what we do. And then, and then we're going to get right into court. Hey there. If we haven't met yet, I'm Emily D. Baker, the badass lawyer and everyone's favorite legal commentator. I'm the host of The Emily Show, and I break down the legal shit behind the news and pop culture stories we all want to talk about. I have been a licensed attorney for over 15 years, but this is not legal advice. I should warn you, I'm a big fan of the cursey words. This channel is where the law nerds unite to talk about facts, not fuckery. Just a few reminders about expert testimony. You um, probably have seen the um, video coming out of court yesterday. Emily, are your words failing you this early? No, no, we're just, we're looking for the right one. You've probably seen the video and pictures coming out of court of Dr. Uh, Curry, who Dr. Hughes was called repeatedly, but Dr. Hughes is sitting here in court. Dr. Curry is probably over here somewhere again, but we saw a video of Dr. Curry in court yesterday. Um, she is an expert. 
Dr. Hughes is an expert. They are allowed to take in all of the other witness testimony, to take in all of the other information, reports, witness testimony, earlier witness testimony, other expert testimony, they're allowed to take all of that in to form an expert opinion. What we saw from Dr. Hughes yesterday, in my opinion, went fairly and far beyond, fairly and far beyond expert opinion. Expert opinion is normally, I ran this test, I determined this thing. But what we had from Dr. Hughes yesterday was a recitation of what Amber Heard told her, but not in the context of Amber Heard told me this, this is the weight I gave it, and this is how it played into my evaluation. What we got was, this is what happened. And that really does go far afield of what is traditionally appropriate from an expert. Why do I think they let it go? I think that Depp's team let it go because it's going to make this expert look tremendously unprofessional when they talk about it on cross. And it's going to be a staggering difference when we get to Dr. Curry on rebuttal. What is a rebuttal, you may ask? Great question. Love to tell you. A rebuttal is Johnny Depp's opportunity to call witnesses back in after Amber Heard rests her case. It looks like the court is coming into court. The court is coming into court. The judge is coming into court. Judge A is popping in. I shouldn't say popping in. Um, and she called the attorneys up to the bench. I wonder if she's going to have a little a little chitty chitty chat chat about this expert in the notes. Like, tell me this expert isn't reading shit today. Can you please tell me that this expert is going to do what she is supposed to do? I am tired of Reddit asking why I allowed this to go on for so long. I want to know that this expert is not going to be an issue. Please tell me. I see you guys uh, letting me know where you're coming in from. It's so good to see so many um, of you coming in from all over the world. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 10K overnight. JD wearing purple for us. I feel like it is definitely a nod to the Lonards. No, I don't. Well, kind of. Good evening from Cambria. It's 12 a.m., but Cross will be worth it. Cross will totally be worth it. Uh, Cross will totally be worth it. It has been definitely busy up here on the channel. Will Amber Heard's team be able to say anything to their witness overnight? They shouldn't. They shouldn't talk to that witness about that witness's testimony in any way at all. They should say nothing about it. And the court admonished it. You're under oath. Um, you're under oath. You're still under oath. So you know you can't talk about your your testimony. I if I was doing Cross, I would ask. I would absolutely come in and ask that question. Um, if I was doing the cross-examination, did anyone talk to you about your testimony? I would ask. She'll, she'll probably say no, but I would still ask it because um, because I don't trust I don't trust this witness. Like reading the notes and being like, oh, it's only a post-it note when it was clearly so much more doesn't really work for me. So I've seen some of you saying this feed's behind. I will look for another feed. This feed has been one of the few that has really good closed captionings, and that is one of the reasons I use this particular feed. So we will we will look at a break. Oh my God, Amber's hair looks like Dr. Curry. It did a little bit. It did a little bit. And I'm going to try to get to these. Good morning, Matt Bond. Thank you for saying good morning, my legal mumbo jumbo talky friend. That is what I do. I need to add it to the intro. Legal, legal mumbo jumbo talky explainy things. That's what I definitely try to do. So with all of that, we will be getting to questions. Thank you for letting me know where you're coming in from. I'm coming in from middle Tennessee. Good morning from Detroit, Michigan hubs. And I live for your streams. Thank you. And are also big fans of the cursey words. Fuck. Yeah. Shout out to him on the replay crew. Now let's do this on cross and replay crew adore you. There will be um, timestamps as best I can down below when we get into cross-examination, when we take breaks, all of that stuff. I'm very curious as to whether they're going over notes or because the judge called them up to the bench. This was not the attorneys saying we have an issue we need to approach. So, you know, we there's always this look on Brett Hoff's face like, what? Why would they say that? It's always very interesting. Um, I love that the other attorneys come in and clutch, by the way. Like, here's here's what you need. So something is going on. It's probably evidentiary related. It's probably related to the documents that were or were not turned over yesterday. I'm fascinated. This is a lot of morning activity for this court. Normally, they come in, the witness is on the bench, and away we roll. This witness has got to be sitting in court, this doctor, this expert, going, oh, my God, um, this is already bad. Yep. 
Yep, it is. It's already bad. Thank you for your coverage. Been dealing with high anxiety and your voice is so soothing. You're welcome, Miss Faye. Love from Newfoundland. Well, thank you so much. Um, we'll see how the voice hangs in. It definitely gets tired, but hopefully it works. Can you define badgering the witness? I feel like the defense has done it a lot, especially with Depp's accountant. Not really. Um, when is it ideal to object on it? It depends on the witness. There's a lot of strategy that goes into that. It depends on the witness. It depends on how they're holding their own. It depends on if they're losing the jury or not. If the jury seems annoyed by what the other attorney is doing, you let the other attorney do it. Like, oh, you're pissing off the jury. You do you, boo. Go ahead and piss off the jury because it makes them look bad, especially with experts that have testified before. They should be able to hold their own. And badgering becomes like, but didn't you? But didn't you? But didn't you? Like this rapid fire harassment. We've heard um, argumentative once or twice. These attorneys have been difficult in their cross. I don't like their style. I don't like that rapid fire kind of jackhammer style of cross-examination. But if it crosses the line, I will absolutely tell you and show you an example of that's too much. So take care of yourself today, law nerds. Take breaks or skip parts if needed. I know we're invested, but Depp's team has it under control. We are invested. Today's testimony is going to be hard too. So I believe at the top, Shanna, I addressed why Dr. Curry can be in the courtroom. I'm mentally preparing for all the objections. There's going to be a lot of them from Umbridge, I'm sure. This is going to be kind of a slogging cross because of the objections. Remember, Depp's team didn't object or Hurd's team didn't object too much to the experts and Depp's team didn't object too much in cross, but this expert's been kind of a mess and it's been very unusual to see somebody reading from their notes, looking at the jury being like, so you want me to like look down and then look up? This kind of dis Dane came across for me, but maybe it's me. I was very put off and I was very optimistic. I wanted to hear about cycle of violence. I wanted to hear about how people behave. I wanted an explanation from an expert of some of the things we've seen in this trial and will see in this trial. And what we got was, oh my God, this one time Johnny Depp kicked Amber Heard in the back on a plane from Boston. And that was shocking to me that it was just a recitation of events like they were facts and not, I did, she didn't evaluate Depp. And she's talking about his obsessive jealousy. It was just B-A-N-A-N-A-S. I have no words. Um, A, B, C, D, E, F, you know. Which of Depp's legal team floats your boat the most? Denison, the old guy at the back, or Chu? So Denison's the one who's been doing the experts. I think Chu's facial expressions are funnier. I like the way Chu argues. Um, I also like Camille Vasquez. I quite like Depp's legal team. Um, they might put me off a little across. Dennison was objecting to some of the leading questions on the expert. And that was very off-putting to me um, because I'm like, come on, you know what it is. Stop objecting. There was plenty of real stuff to object about. So objecting about the silly stuff was annoying. Um, so we might not see Dr. Curry again for two weeks. Correct. We might not see Dr. Curry again for two weeks. Question. If Amber Heard is still on the standby Thursday with the bye week upcoming, I love that you called it a bye week. We're in sports metaphors deep. I'm sorry. The, the, they will be dark um, next week, which is what it's called in court. But I love Michelle. I love you called it a bye week. We're going to start calling it that. With the bye week upcoming, she won't be able to speak to her lawyers for 10 days. No, she won't be able to speak to her lawyers about her testimony. She can still talk about um, she can still talk about court and procedure in court and the case and things like that. But she won't be able to talk about testimony. Who is is she talking to the PR dude? I think she is. I think she and the PR dude are talking. I bet she's admonishing him about using his phone. I wonder if that's what they were talking about at the bench. I bet she was admonishing him about his phone. Like, bro can't be on his phone. He's not in the first row. He's not okay. legal team. Thank he you. can't be on his phone. Is he yeah. sitting next to Chanley Painter from Court TV again? Uh, we're going to be getting the, the jury coming in. I didn't bake muffins yet. I've desperately wanted to. I probably won't get muffins till Friday. Friday, I'm just going to get myself some freaking muffins. All right, the jury is coming in and then the witness will resume the stand. It's interesting to me when Depp was on the stand, they had the witness on the stand when the jury walked in. They're going to like make her walk up again. Um, but I wonder if that's intentional and I wonder if she will walk up with nothing in her hands. That's what I'm going to be looking for. Will she walk up with her binder? Will she walk up with any papers or will she walk up with just a freaking bottle of Dasani? We're going to see in just a minute. Um, which I kind of love that she's not already sat there so we can see it. Not right. I love Reddit. Um, even when they don't love me, I love Reddit. So I'm very interested to see her walk up. Um, why won't it take my chat message? I don't know, Ruth. It looks like it did. Sometimes Google can be weird. Apologies for Google being weird. So I'm going to try to get to, hello, Saskatchewan, Canada. 
Hello, everybody. So good to see you coming in. I've got my coffee. I hope you all do too. It's going to be, um, we're going to do a bang soon. I don't know what I am hearing. Sorry. My phone is talking to me. Um, that was deeply confusing for a minute. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The jury right. is here. Dr. Hughes, if you can come back to the stand for me, please. No, let's watch her walk up. We want to watch her walk up. Darn it. There she is. Just a bottle of water. Just a bottle of water. She's going to say, if I could refer to my notes, and they're going to say, negative ghostwriter, the pattern is full. Where's your post-it note right. now? Right. Cross-examination. Cross-examination. Let's go. Good morning, Dr. Hughes. I'm Wade Dennis. We have a message for I'm no, Wade good morning. Dennison. Good morning. You testified yesterday that you have to give uh, careful attention to gendered stereotypes. Oh, shit. That is, that is correct. Coming in hot. Uh, when you're talking about in intimate partner violence, you have to pay attention to gendered stereotypes. <sighs> and during your testimony, you, in fact, paid attention right into it. to gendered stereotypes, correct? Nonstop. I'm not sure what you mean. Well, <laughs> you said we were going to have to pay attention to gendered stereotypes. We're aware. And then you testified at length where you reference both men and women. You paid attention to those stereotypes during the course of your testimony, correct? What I was saying was you have to pay attention to gendered stereotypes when you're conducting these evaluations. You can't assume all the time that the male is the perpetrator and the female is the victim. You have to go into the evaluation so understanding that. that the male also could be the victim of intimate partner violence. In fact, you're aware that there are large scale studies that do say that IPV towards males does exist. Of course. Okay. And every time you referred to the characteristic of a victim of intimate partner violence yesterday, you used the pronouns she or her. Every Didn't time. You? I was using the she and her pronouns in this case because my determination was, as I stated, that Ms. Heard was the victim of intimate partner violence. That is why I was using the she, her pronouns. You, in fact, said women get into the relationship for all the right reasons. That's what you, you said. Woman gets into the relationship for all the right reasons. Overnight. And then you say they difficult so much time. for her, for victim to extra, extricate herself. You go on to say that she can and she should. Over and over, you use she, right? I believe in this case I did because I was referencing this case where I found Miss Heard to be the victim of intimate partner violence. It doesn't mean that men don't get into the relationships for all the right reasons, too. I believe they do. Nearly every time I like you that he's going slow. The perpetrator. I want to see Dr. Hughes's ITV, face. Can we just switch the camera and go on Skynet? Sky TV. And it goes back to the same reasoning as I'm describing my understanding and my evaluation in this matter. Of course, men can be perpetrators and victims of intimate partner violence. That's well established in the research and that's well established in my clinical practice as well. Isn't the reason that mm. you used the pronouns that you did that you almost always testify on behalf of a woman? There we go. That's not correct. Oh, you don't even remember the last time you testified on behalf of a man. Well, I don't test or testify on behalf of someone. I testify as to the results of my evaluation. Do you I really, though? I frequently treat and assess male victims of childhood sexual abuse who are coming into treatment for a abuse by their Boy Scout Not leader, of by IPV. their cat, by their coach, by their teacher, by a trusted adult. I see them in therapy. I see them in male victims of childhood sexual cases. assault. So, so I, I treat and evaluate men I, all the time. I didn't ask you about treatment. I asked you about testimony. You talk, If you can hear you the mowers, I'm sorry. More practice between treatment and testimony. I'm not asking about treatment. When's the last time you testified on behalf of a man? A man victim. I testified recently in a deposition on behalf of a man who was traumatized because he was wrongly convicted. At the time of your deposition six weeks ago, you couldn't remember a single time you had testified on behalf of a man. I testified in my deposition that I testified in a case of a man who was wrongly convicted about 20 years and suffered physical and sexual violence in prison. And I detailed the traumatic effects of the, that that happened on that gentleman. All right. 
why don't we take a look? Why don't we take a look at your deposition? I again, he's being firm, but the tone to me doesn't feel as snarky. Chat, let me know. But the tone doesn't come across the same way that some of the tone from Herd's team has. It's firm, but it's right. not snarky. So let yes. me approach. So he's approaching and handing her the deposition transcript. So that's that's what he's getting to. But he got right into the gendered language right. she used yesterday. Transcript of the deposition Welcome you listening. gave Six March 20, 2022, correct? Yes. All right. Let's go to. This is a proper question for page bias. 77. So they're going to go through together. Did you say this or not? Hello, fellow Tennessean. Hello, all my Tennesseans in the chat. Hello, good morning, Hungry and Thomas. Thomas. Let's Amber's probably back. reading the transcript from yesterday. If I was, I would. If I was her, I would. I'd be reading yesterday's transcript because it's we're going to get in there a lot today. Let's, and I hope they keep this nice and slow. And eight. So you can't Low recall and slow, a single people. instance where you were hired by the attorney representing the male in an IPV matter. Correct? In an IPV matter. That's the detail that matters. In an IPV matter, not in a trauma matter or a child sexual abuse matter. Okay, so that's the distinction. You, you've never, you don't have any recollection of ever testifying I think on so. behalf of a male Jensen. in an IPV matter. As I stated yesterday, the very first case that I testified in was in a same-sex intimate partner violence where the man was the victim of another man. I uh, routinely okay. treat and assess same-sex couples where the, then the female can be the perpetrator of another female and the male can be the perpetrator or a victim of, of his partner. But what about in heterosexual so, relationships? She's dancing this, around you, all you over that. testified in a case where one male is alleged to have engaged in uh, IPV against another male. Correct. Okay. This is this is going but to be that's off the, the only rails. One you're that's the only one you remember. I don't think she's going to throw any wine, though. No, so maybe I've done this frequently. As you well know, most cases don't go to trial. I've worked on hundreds and hundreds of cases. You've limited it to testimony. Many cases don't come to trial, but I've issued reports and worked on many cases of same-sex intimate partner violence. Where she's going to get defensive are today. But, but she's already sounding a bit testimony. defensive. Sanny, hello to your cat, Lucky. The question of testimony. And the only testimony that you remember is the two is the same sex couple, right? There were multiple same sex couples, I believe, that I testified. That you testified in court at trial. I believe so, yes. All right, but you didn't remember that in in March. I did remember that in March. Then why oh. didn't you testify to it? Uh, you're a professional witness, correct? That's not correct. You're no? an expert witness. You make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year Hello, testifying Jim in Ed. court, correct? Not testifying in court, I conduct thorough, comprehensive psychological evaluations of individuals who are good reframe. involved in a court case. The majority of those cases never show up in a courtroom. And half of my practice and half of my income is about my clinical work with people who are coming that to me for therapy. Doesn't mean you I, don't I make hundreds of thousands of dollars. Of I'm, I'm asking He's getting you a little snappy. Hundreds of thousands of dollars don't a get year. Snappy. Testifying as an expert witness in court. Uh, if he starts yelling as at her, you're I'm going to be so that annoyed. Question, that's not correct. I that would be the amount of income that I generate from my forensic practice. I testify perhaps maybe once or twice a year. The best, of, most of the work <laughs> is done behind right the now. scenes in evaluating individuals and issuing reports. But you'll agree with me that yes, Cello, I think they consulted Dr. Curry last night. Is providing expert have. witness testimony. That's not correct. No. That's not a big part of your practice. Uh, if I testify twice a year, that's not a big part of my practice. All the other time is doing the work for the cases and evaluating the individuals and issuing reports. So they're going to go back to her deposition. I think that's what the pause is. Um, I, Karen, I don't know the choice on Amber Heard's clothes. What percentage I don't understand. of work do you devote to forensic psychology. Cool. I'll answer that at the break. As I stated yesterday, I, I say half and half clinical, half forensic, but I also have a substantial Hello, amount of time that I use in the professional activities and serving on uh, professional boards. So what portion of your practice do you provide expert witness services? 
I think you're using the expert witness services synonymous with the forensic psychology part of the practice. So the forensic How psychology do you know what he's practice, saying? what I do here today is one part of it. And it's a smaller part as opposed to all of the evaluations and individuals that I'm assessing. Your practice is successful enough that you maintain your offices on Madison Avenue in, in New York, Ooh. correctly? Correct, I've had that office since refresh. 2005. Right. Um, and you're sufficiently successful at your uh, forensic work. I mean, it's not bad for her to, to be successful. Work at a hospital. It's not bad for right. her to perform pro bono work. Correct. And I also do pro bono work as well. Yeah, that's right. not a bad thing. Um, in Don't fact, try to you characterize it as bad. You instruct others on the use of expert testimony in court cases, correct? On the use and understanding trauma and violence abuse in the courtroom and how to, for advocates and people who could not have this level of training or experience, how to come into the courtroom and talk about very difficult issues of domestic violence. Yes. All right. Can we pull up PX 1241? I would love to know what PX 1241 is. It sounds like an address somewhere, but I would love to know what PX 1241 is. Another sleepless night from Sydney. Thanks. I love your commentary as a psychologist who um, Teddy's as an expert document? witness. I am so disappointed with this witness. Oh, uh, yes. It looks like the front industry. page of a PowerPoint presentation. Maria, that's a powerful a PowerPoint statement. Thank you. Given by, whom? by myself oh. and Mary oh, Ann Dutton, who is a uh, very well-known and respected researcher and clinician in the area of domestic violence. They're bringing up her own presentations. That you're giving? Expert nice. witness testimony in cases involving domestic violence. I want to see it. I want to know. Who did you give this uh, presentation to? That was this to is research. the National Clearinghouse for the Defense of Battered Women. Um, that is an organization that provides legal services to women who have assaulted or killed their partners in self-defense. And mostly people who these individuals, the, the women who they've seen in treatment are through shelter-based programs or through advocates. And those are individuals who don't really know how to come into the courtroom and talk. And that's what, what this um, presentation Aaron, it's okay. is for. It's okay. Thank you for sharing. I'm going to move uh, PX 1241 in evidence. Any objection? No. All right, 1241 in evidence. So this is going to or yes, let's what the types of presentations she gives, what presentations she gives, and what she says. Um, this is from 2015, though. It is a bit old. All right. So Why don't we pull up? Using someone's word against her, though, is powerful when you use people's words against them. Good morning, Emily. So, always powerful when you can look up what they've written, what they've researched. This document. It takes money. Yes, this also looks like a PowerPoint presentation that I gave. It takes money right. to do this. What is the name of this PowerPoint presentation? But it's powerful. This is called The Use of Psychological Experts in Cases of Domestic Violence. It was presented to the Kings County Bar Association, which is in Brooklyn. And what this presentation <laughs> talked about was some of the things that I talked to you all about yesterday, the myths and misconceptions in intimate partner violence, when women use force, what happens if they drop protective orders. Christina, happy birthday, happy anniversary. Present in court. And that's what this presentation was to attorneys at the Bar Association. Okay. But this is another presentation that you gave uh, as to the use of psychological that, experts Frank. and you gave it to a, to a Bar Association. Right, they were prosecutors and defense attorneys in attendance at that. Oh, you're watching at Disneyland. Say hello. Say hello at to Star Wars Land for me. You testified that you were going to be paid a hundred dollars an hour for your time in this case. I did not testify to that. Oh, you did not. Great. That's an error in the transcript. Oh, that's not. A, that's not right. That's correct. So, and you corrected the transcript. We did not do an errata in the transcript at this point. So you knew there was an error in the transcript, but you didn't fix it? There were several errors in the transcript. But you didn't fix any of them? There was no time to fix them. That's correct. All right. So you're not being paid $100 an hour. How much are you getting paid? I'm being paid $500 an hour. $500 an hour. And that's what... Um, She's like, no, I'm not being paid 100 that's the bill you sent for your deposition, right? $500 an hour. Correct. He's responsive to her questions, which uh, I like. He's listening to her. He's not just going down a list. He's responding number, as she responds. Uh, but her uh, sassiness in this case. is getting high. He um, needs to take his sassiness down so she can shine as you being You have snarky. not formed an opinion as to whether I Mr. Think. Depp committed intimate, intimate partner violence against Miss Hurd. Correct? 
Correct. I formed the opinion that Ms. Hurd's report of the intimate partner violence is consistent with what we know in the literature about intimate partner violence. That didn't come out yet yesterday. You have a limited role here comparing individual data to group data and then that was just important. determining whether it's consistent, right? I wouldn't say it's a limited role, but that's generally correct. Uh, you wouldn't use the word limited role? A limited role in terms of how we go about a, a, a narrow role. Not You're a forensic. Role in this case. You remember whether you use limited role in your deposition? She's like, I'm important. I don't. If you have it in front of me, you probably think I did, but yeah. sure. Uh, and oh. you have no independent knowledge. I form the, the opinion that Hurd's report is consistent. Is no opinion of the facts. I have the knowledge of the plethora Ooh. of documents that I've reviewed in this case. No, I'm asking oh. you your independent firsthand knowledge. You have none of that, right? You mean whether I was there? Yeah, you of, weren't there. Of course not. Okay. Um, and you're not testifying to the veracity, the truthfulness of any of the allegations. Correct. I'm testifying to the consistency of the data points of all the different documents, including the psychological testing and the clinical evaluation that I conducted of Ms. Hurd and how that comports with the therapy records and all the other documents and the photos and texts that I read. Documents like her and arrest you have no report. personal knowledge of any abuse. Did you get that? Correct. Personally. Correct. Right. And all you know is what Ms. Hurd self-reported to you and others. That's important. That's not correct. What else do you know? Because you did collateral interviews. And I reviewed medical records. So and I reviewed other witness statements self of what they witnessed and what they saw. Self-report to yourself and others. And all of those statements that you reviewed, those were statements that started with Miss Heard, correct? Not necessarily. Well, the medical records did, didn't they? Well, the medical records, if she's self-reporting what happened to her, sure. I mean, that's what we do when we go to a physician. We say, I have a headache. We're self-reporting our difficulties. Yeah. Um, everything Ms. Heard reported directly to you correct, Chris. was after she was sued by Mr. Depp in this case, correct? Correct. And again, they're trying to and point you out didn't the bias in that. meet Ms. Heard until, what, September 2019? That was the first evaluation appointment, correct. How'd you get engaged? How were you hired? How are you hired? How'd you get hired? Oh. How were you hired? She's um, like, you I want to know about I met by the my legal husband. Team. Or, were you interviewed by her legal team as to whether you were going to testify here? I was not. You were not interviewed. I was not. You were contacted. Correct. Had you worked with that legal team before? I had. Yeah. Uh -huh. So they already knew who you were, right? Correct. She worked at with them any before. any time that you were working with Ms. Hurd or assessing Ms. Hurd, she could have chose to fire you, correct? I suppose her legal team could have chose to fire her. I was not her. She is not my client. The legal team is the one who hires me. I am responsible to the legal team, not Ms. Hurd. And, this legal t and the legal team that hired you already knew who you were because you worked together previously. <laughs> and clearly they knew of my expertise in this area of intimacy partner violence and traumatic because we've worked together before they contacted me to work on this matter all right several times yesterday you used language about You're welcome, assessing Ms. Hurd's relationship with Mr. Depp you she does sound a bit talking about that sure you can't assess you, a Chandra. relationship without talking to both parties can you you certainly can get a lot of information from one party absolutely but and especially gonna, when it's buttressed by other documents, including four years of therapy records and couples therapy records, you can get a lot of information based on those documents and that com contemporaneous reports of the relationship. Tammy, I, I didn't ask whether you get a lot of information. I asked whether you can assess a relationship without talking to both parties. No, YouTuber, it's fair. I want to know what people think. I believe you can. There are certainly limitations inherent in that, but you certainly can. You talked to Miss Heard for what, approximately 30 hours, right? Correct. Talked to her for 30 hours. How long have you spent with Mr. Depp? Hey, friend. I did not spend any time with Mr. Depp. It was my understanding that he did not sit for a psychological evaluation. He did not. In fact, you never met Mr. Depp, have you? I have not. But you 
purport to be able to assess the relationship Fair. between Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard. But I also read Mr. Depp's transcripts of his testimony. I watched his deposition testimony. I reviewed his medical records. I reviewed his text messages. So it's not necessarily totally blind. I did have information, although I'm not making a conclusion about- Did you Mr. listen Depp to the audio? Is the standard I know. now not necessarily totally blind? I'm That's how sure. you assess the relationship. If it's not necessarily totally blind, I can assess it. No, we recess as clinical She's psychologists relationships words. all the time. That's what we're trained to do. It's certainly someone who's been trained in intimate partner violence to understand and look for the dynamics that happen in that relationship. And then when we have external data that supports what the individual is telling us Ask way before this legal the case audio. even came on the scene, Dropping my that pen. becomes very strong data to support that conclusion. Let's talk about some of that data. Sure. Let's right. talk about some of that data. Uh, you chose to conduct some <laughs> collateral interviews. Correct. Right? Um, and you interviewed Dr. Bonnie Jacobs. Correct. And you you looked at her notes. Correct. Never at read yet. And, and you know that Ms. Jacobs, Dr. She's Jacobs. She's getting quite defensive. Uh, doesn't does know like anything today. about the version of what happened in Australia until Ms. Heard had already been sued. Correct? Brian, this is exactly, we have to be here because it's amazing. I believe she was not in treatment with Dr. Jacobs at the time the Australia incident occurred. So that would be correct. She did reach out to Dr. Connell Cohen about Australia, who she was treating with at that time contemporaneously. I have a mega point I'll of coffee. About Dr. Cohen. We'll He's letting her answer though, which so, is appreciated uh, and welcomed. You know that Ms. Hurd stopped seeing Dr. Jacobs in August, 2014. That's correct. And she didn't go back until after she got sued, right? I believe that's the date. I'd have to look for, to make sure, it's but TMB. I believe that you're correct. Yeah. And you said you reviewed Dr. Con you, you interviewed Dr. Connell Cohen. That's correct. Henry and you Darcy, also reviewed it should his be. deposition testimony. That's correct. It should have been. But and they made the point. That, when, that he testified that when he was treating a patient, he assumes the patient is telling I'll the talk truth. About that at the break. Correct? I believe he said something to that effect. You have to assume the patient's telling the truth to treat if, them. You're treating them. If he them. has no reason to believe otherwise, if there's no other data to believe otherwise that your patient's not being totally honest with you, then you believe what they're saying. Right. Amy no Fox, other a great point. data to believe otherwise, but the sole thing that's happening is Ms. Hurd is talking to Mr. Cohen. Thank you, Maggie. Welcome. Cohen. I wouldn't say she's talking to him. She's going to him for therapy and he's using his clinical psychological expertise to understand to treat. the connection between her symptoms and what she's reporting, what's going on in her life. All right. But you understand that Glad you have he, a testified that he assumes the patient is telling the truth. That's their Again, role. I understand that statement in his testimony. <laughs> I have a lot more rich information of having spoken to him for two hours and reviewing his clinical notes. Fair. Testified he was making a leap of faith with respect to that, right? With respect to the truthfulness. Again, that was Yikes. not my understanding of speaking with him and reviewing his notes. I'm aware he testified something to that effect. Right. Um, and you testified yesterday that Dr. Cohen never diagnosed Ms. Hurd with any personality disorders. You remember that? Yes. Fact, Thank you, Lake Queen. Dr. Cohen's deposition testimony reflects the fact that he doesn't make diagnoses, correct? Correct. And I asked him specifically, did he have any we'll indications that, that even if he doesn't, as his practice, use them, does she meet criteria for a personality yeah, he disorder? Didn't, and he told me she did not. He didn't right. use evaluation. So you asked him specifically with right. respect to a topic that you haven't disclosed in your uh, expert report. Ooh. And then uh, he made a conclusion that's reflected in no document. Ooh. It's reflected in my notes. It's reflected in his notes about what he's treating. He's treating the symptoms. He's not focusing on the diagnosis, he didn't but he is treating test the symptoms. Her. You talked about Dr. Cohen's concern for Ms. Hurd's safety. Yes. Correct. Yes. Yes. Why didn't he report? He wasn't talking about her physical safety, was he? Yes, he was. No, he was talking about her emotional safety. Wasn't that what he was talking about? He was concerned for both. Okay. Did Dr. Cohen testify that he never had the feeling that Johnny intended to hurt Ms. Hurd? I believe he said that. I mean, he talked about Mr. Depp being very poorly controlled, and that's what made him 
him, Dr. Cohen, concerned because in those moments when he was not controlled that he could accidentally seriously hurt Miss Hurt. Accidentally seriously Let's hurt. She's adding words in there. Miss Hurd told Dr. Cohen that Mr. Depp was poorly controlled, correct? That's not correct. Okay. He determined that from the in, the treatment he was Thank providing Miss Hurd. And he also had a couple session with Mr. Depp, and he also had correspondence with Dr. Kipper. So he had other information as to Mr. Depp's functioning. Thank you, Hey. All right, you talked about Dr. Banks. Correct. Dr. Banks. Yeah, no notes today is interesting. Relationship consulting, right? Consultation and relationship. Correct. This is so interesting. And Dr. Banks only met with them once. Correct. All right. And you did. And That's what happens on Cross, with, though. That's uh, fair. Ms. Hurd's mother, Paige. That's correct. Thank you you so agree much. with me that a person's family member is not the most objective source of information? Glad it's the afternoon. Time. Sometimes you have to certainly uh, control for that, that the person may be How do you wanting control? to be protective of, um, of their daughter, of course. And you interviewed Ms. Uh, Paige Hurd. How do you control Ms. for that? Had already, been su uh, had already sued uh, Amber Hurd. Right. The entirety of my work in this case happened, obviously, after the lawsuit. Did you review in that context any of uh, Paige Hurd's text messages with with Mr. Interesting. Depp? Interesting. I'm not sure if I saw them with Mr. Depp. I do believe I saw some with Ms. Hurd. I mean, Ms. Ms. Hurd, Ms. Paige Hurd, Paige Hurd, Amber Hurd's mother did talk to me about her relationship with Mr. Depp. And she told you that she loved Johnny even after Amber alleged abuse, correct? She did. All right. We'll talk about the bye week at a break. Now you testified that you. I like his forensic pacing. With I think you said his pacing day. doesn't feel nearly a as assaulting. Of skepticism. Pacing. Correct. All right. It's good pacing. This skepticism didn't uh, cause you to conduct interviews with. I think she might need a muffin. For but cross instance, is hard. Laurel Anderson. Right. I did not speak to Dr. Laurel Anderson. It could. And you chose not to speak to Dr. Laurel Anderson because you disagreed with Dr. Laurel Anderson? That's not correct. Is this Dennison right. speaking? You yes. Know, what did Dr. Laurel Anderson do on behalf of um, Ms. Hurd and Mr. Depp? She was a couples therapist that they sought. They had four couples sessions. Um, as I stated yesterday, one of them in which Mr. Depp uh, stormed out of. She did have a long... I guess, evaluation or interview with Mr. Depp individually and with Ms. Hurd individually. And then she saw them um, inter intermittently after um, the May 21st, 2016 incident and they, when they were filing for divorce. Thank you, Brittany. Uh, so you didn't interview uh, Laurel Anderson, but you know what she did? Uh, we haven't seen a lot of data yet. Because we had her redacted notes and her deposition. All right. Actually, Ashley, this is so and sweet. You Thank you for sharing. From I love her this. Say hello to your son for me. That Dr. Anderson didn't believe Miss Heard to be a victim of spousal abuse. I believe those were her words. Yes. And you also understood from her deposition that Mr. Depp had not had a very long history of being violent with any of his wife or women. This is how they're going to bring. She said the that hammer. as well. It's slow. Yeah. It's going to be but consistent. But that's something about Ms. Hurd significantly triggered him. She talked about that as well. <laughs> and Dr. Anderson thought that Vera. Mr. Depp had been, uh, her words, well controlled, Kristen. I think, for Lemon almost 20 30 seed. years, correct? Up until this point, I believe she said. This is interesting. Uh, Did you discount the testimony that, that you contradicted that you? you? Very important. Yes. All right. So... You know, Miss Hurd had a personal nurse. Correct. Uh, Aaron ooh, Filotti. Ooh, let's Correct. get into Filotti's notes. You didn't interview Miss Filotti either. I did not. Why not? Uh, she was with her all the time. You know, she spent time with Miss Hurd on a regular basis during her relationship with Mr. Depp. Correct. I had her clinical notes that I reviewed. Right. And you reviewed her test, her deposition testimony. Correct. Some of which the jury's heard, right? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you reviewed the, the nursing notes. 
Yes. So you know she seems to remember a lot without her notes. Admitted to a history of eating disorders to Miss Filati, correct? I know that's in the notes. That's nowhere else in any other record. So this came I'm up not yesterday. Sure where that came from? By me. But I brought you this up yesterday. On everybody else's notes. Why did you? And there are some things notes? that I disagreed with. Like I disagree with Dr. Laurel <sighs> Anderson about it being mutual abuse. Right. So, so, so you the disagree. Stuff you disagree with you disregard, and the rest you keep. Correct. Well, bing, that's bing, not bing. correct. But that's, that what you just said? that's not correct. Right. Okay. Um, you know that Ms. Filati saw Ms. Hurd immediately after she returned from Australia. I'd have to look at the notes again to that was be sure, good line but I know she did see her when she came back from Australia. That's correct. Did Ms. Filati document any injuries to Ms. Hurd in her notes? I did not see that in the record. Okay, so you looked at her notes and there's no injury to Ms. Hurd documented in her nurse's notes following her return from Australia. Correct. Okay. So far, this is a very good cross. I think it's okay you that he lets her go a little bit. Uh, this concept. Uh, I think he should, because uh, it's just getting worse for her. I don't think he's worried about it. And you testified there's certain factors that are present relationship where a woman ends up uh, murdered by her partner. Correct. Yeah. She talked a lot about fatal domestic violence. And that's one of the ways you look at, as to whether a woman is in a very dangerous situation. Correct. Chloe, don't forget to study. Can we pull up PX92? Ooh, what are we bringing up? These are exhibits of her. That's what we've seen in the past. Um, are these different glasses than yesterday? I think these are different glasses than yesterday. Oh shit, they brought up the knife. Damn. I believe this is the um, knife that Miss Heard gave to Mr. Depp as a gift. Right. Damn. And you speak Spanish? Un poquito. <laughs> you know what it says? That's and a nice moment. La muerta, until death. So, so a woman you suggest has characteristics of being afraid for her life. Oh, they brought it. Gives her intimate partner a large yep, knife, yep. which she has inscribed until death. That's your testimony? Well, there's context. Okay. Uh, it's cross. You don't get context. You get you context on a redirect. Uh, we'll do that later. So yep. we talked about, you talked a little bit about uh, Mr. Depp purporting to demonstrate uh, jealousy with Ms. Hurd. Do you recall that? Yes, I do. Uh, and you specifically talked about Mr. Depp displaying <sighs> jealousy regarding uh, the actor James Franco. Correct. Oh, James Franco has entered the chat again. Now, <laughs> He's like, damn it, leave my name out of this trial. The very time you met with Ms. Hurd, she talked to you about Ms. Franco, uh, Mr. Franco, James Franco, correct? I don't know if it was the first time, but I did ask about some other relationships. Okay. So why don't we do this? Let's go. It's He uh, tied the lethal PX domestic violence to the gift of the knife, which is very interesting. Oh, everybody's got candy on the desk today. I've never seen a judge be cool with that shit ever. I've never seen a so judge cool with that. Ever, ever. Is the document that's in front of you. Ever, yes. ever. All right. And what I would like to do, what is it? Um, it's one, uh, a top sheet of a background information questionnaire that I use to help guide the evaluation. Okay. So now, this is, who filled it out? I filled it out. Whose form is it? My form. All right. I'm going to move just the first page into evidence because it, we're going to talk about other portions of it later. Could you back out so she can see the first, whole first page? Yep. Any objection? That's fair. Okay. I can't. He, we he will said get the whole thing into evidence. Going to ask thing in evidence? about it sure. later. I have he no just, objection whatsoever. All right. 12. He hasn't laid the in foundation in full. I okay. love how she says, and this is kudos to Umbridge. I love how she says, I have any, no objection are whatsoever. There any identifiers that need Indicating just, to the jury, this strong. isn't bad for yeah. us. I like this. This is good all for right. us. So it gives okay. this, uh, so, uh, let it all in. We love it. We love it here, which is very interesting. I don't know what the nature of the redactions are going to be, but.
Okay, well, yeah. you can oh, discuss we'll work, it. We'll work with okay, you on thank that, you. I, I'm All right. Uh, and identifiers are really just uh, making sure no private information is in 1246 uh, has been moved into evidence. Can we blow up the bottom right hand corner? Yeah, let's you see it. Publish to the jury. Yeah, yeah let's, let's publish please it publish it. We'd like to see. I, I don't take a look real quick well, we then. Can, it, well, once you um, that's fair if there's identifiers. I mean, that's fair. That. Any objection to that? You guys, there's 43. Thousand of you in the chat. Don't forget to do the YouTube like. Well, that's what they're going to show. That's yeah. what we're going to show. All right, publish soon. Look, everyone's so pleasant now. We're all getting along. Right. So this is everybody bottom, had a muffin. Bottom corner, um, your notes, um, and it's under the section of your notes. James Franco friends got close, but really wanted Correct. to be. Right. Damn it! And one of the notes here on the right it says, "J.F. Travis." That's James. James Franco, right? Correct. Friends got, got close, close, but, but really, really wanted, wanted to, to be with Johnny. Well, it says JF friends. They were friends. All right. It said friends, but you put him under intimate relationship. Well, there's a line there's a there line. because I was asking specifically about other things that were allegations in this. Close matter. friendships can matter. There's a line there because you did not believe that they sh should go under intimate relationships, but it's on your form. She wasn't telling me that this was an intimate relationship. I queried and we got as there, to Logan. what's going on with James Franco because that was something that was raised in this case. We all want to know what's going and on with James a Franco. Note for December 2050. When they became more friends, more friendly. Right. And that was a period of time in which Michelle, we did Mr. get to that. I know I'm a little behind on the chats. To Mr. Depp, correct? Correct. So she became close. Is this Elon? To Mr. Franco. Girl, we need a screenshot again. In December 2015. Hello, Elon. And uh, at least you put it under intimate relationships. Met ball. With a line differentiating another part of this document. That's timely. The Met ball is very timely. Provide another header, like a header that says <laughs> friends. Oh, Lord. That's being no. a little picky. No. Well, let's look at the next one. Thank you, Marlena. I want them to ask the about it. The next one says, I think it says Elon. Correct. It's Elon Musk, right? Correct. All right. May 2016. Correct. Met him Met Ball. Correct. That's a big fancy party in New York, right? Yes, it is. All right. That happened this week. Um, Elon was there with his and mom. And she said she dated him after Johnny. Correct. We're building she met Elon something. Musk in May 2016 when she filed the TRO. Uh, the last answer was May 21st. I oh, well, believe it was May 26th, 27th. <laughs> I'm correct. When did yes. she start yes, dating Elon Musk? Sometime after that. Uh, sometime after the TRO? I believe so, yes. Okay. After the TRO, before the divorce, which again, they're separated. There's a temporary restraining order. That's not really a, a you huge talk, deal. You can take that down. He wants to get to the fact that it's not unreasonable uh, that Depp was worried about her being about unfaithful. Concept of, uh, reactive violence. Yes. Yeah. Um, reactive violence is something we wanted them to talk about. I'm interested to so hear I, how this so goes. Just so I understand your position on this. Is it your position that if Miss Heard was abused, she gets to hit Mr. Depp? That's, That's not my opinion. But Only if it's a little violence. Right? It has to be just and a little bit of violence. To that. Right. Just find a little bit of violence. How many times do you believe that she told you that she hit him? Do I believe that she told me or how many instances were there? Well, I don't know. How you. How would you know other than her telling you? You weren't there, right? I was not there. That's she true. tries to reframe it as facts. That's right. interesting. How many times did she admit to hitting you? She indicated a number of times in a number of instances. All right. Um. You indicated that you'd listen to audio recordings as part there of the work in this case. There we go. That's correct. All right. I wanted I'd to like hear to more about this. I'd like to play a portion of one of those recordings. For my own curiosity. Ooh, we're playing Plays audio. Exhibit 343. It's already in evidence. And for the record, the portion I want to play is 2 minutes 46. Uh, 2.46. Yeah, this is a much different style of cross. I much um, prefer. 0 0.20. This cross has a point and a direction, and it's just building down the road of what they want to ask, and now they're going to play audio. This audio will probably be triggering, so just heads up. That's I said to 
These audios are awful. No, I said to you, please tell Travis what just happened. Oh, you told me to do it. You told me to. You said, go do that. I said, no, you tell, tell him what just happened. And I lied. And that you punched me in You're the right. fucking thing. And you, you figured it all out. And you said, no, fuck it. No, I didn't. What the fuck are you talking about? And I, I watched you, you lie. And then I, I didn't I punch said, you, by the way. You, I'm sorry that I didn't uh, uh, hit you across the face in a proper slap, but I was hitting you. It was not punching you. Babe, you're not punched. Don't tell me what it feels like to be punched. You, you know, you've been a lot of fights, you've been around a long time. I don't know. Yeah. No, I, when you fucking have a close You face. didn't get punched. You got hit. I'm sorry I hit you like this, but I did not punch you. I did not fucking deck you. I fucking was hitting you. I don't know what the motion of my actual hand was, but you're fine. I did not hurt you. I did not punch you. I was hitting you. How are you? How, what am I supposed to do? Do this? I, I'm not sitting here bitching about it, am I? You are. That's the difference bitching. between me and you. You're a fucking baby. Because you, start you are such a baby. Grow the fuck up, Johnny. I did start a physical fight. Yeah, you did, so I had because, to get the fuck out of there. Yes, you did. So you did the right thing, the big thing. The, you know what? You're admirable. Yep. You agree with Miss Hearn that it's admirable to retreat from a fight? Wow. Is it is it admirable? To, it is admirable to retreat from a fight. Yeah. Um, anything about this to suggest to you that it's characteristic of reactive violence? In this instance, if true, if she said she hit him <laughs> first, then that would not be reactive violence. You took everything so, else as true. Why not this? You testified that Ms. Hurd reported to you that she engaged in low levels of violence, correct? Well, I don't think she said that. I think that was the characterization of knowing the types of minor and severe you levels took of violence. Everything else is true. Why okay. wouldn't you take I, that as I, true? I got it wrong. You consider low levels of violence. Well, I consider what the literature and the research talks about low levels of violence as opposed to severe um, levels of violence. Severing a finger. I, I think you, you suggested if you, that uh, Ms. Hurd sustained more severe uh Injuries, correct? This is I think I said more frequent injuries. More frequent, but not more severe. Um, well, certainly uh, the incidents in Australia and the sexual violence and the incidents on December 15th, 2015 were quite severe. She remembers now. Um, you said you reviewed medical records in rendering your opinion. Correct. Uh, uh, and you, rev re you reviewed photographs. Correct. Now, records of injuries? Other than the reports to her therapists, which you call medical records, right? Yeah, I would call those medical records, right. sure. Other than the reports to her therapists, there's not a single medical record that reflects any injury to Ms. Hurd, is there? That's not correct. No. There is not I would love a, to know. Other than what doctor reflected injuries yes. to Ms. Hurd? What doctor? The note by Erin Borum, uh, her married name, a lot, I'm not recalling her married name, indicated that she oh, the blood was headbutted by Mr. Depp and that she went for a concussion check and she had a busted lip and then she went to Dr. Kipper's office in order lip. to get checked. That's what? not And there's a medical record other said. than that note? Because we saw it? the notes yesterday. There's a note that she showed up at Dr. Kipper's office. There's a note in the but similar two days Dr. that Dr. Kipper, Dr. Laurel Anderson saw the two bruises from that same incident as well. That's Dr. not in um, the notes that we saw yesterday. You reviewed photographs that we yes. saw. Right. Um, I'd like to put up PX 144. They can ask uh, for a copy. Published to the jury briefly. Of I'm going to portions of testimony. They don't briefly. just get to reread the whole trial. These are probably Aaron Filati's notes. That photograph. Oh, photos. doesn't reflect a low level of violence. That's uh, that reflects a severe injury. Warning! Yeah. Warning! Finger. Why don't we go to PX 144. Fucking hell. You've got to warn us, man. Denison, if you're going to put Vesuvius. That's a severe injury that ended up with Mr. Depp on a gurney. It's correct? a good line of questioning. That is a severe injury, correct. Yeah. But if you're going to put Vesuvius up on the fucking screen, sure. heads up for the audience at home. <laughs> um, they're also going to get into is probably the cigarette burn on his face. That Maybe. Throwing a can of mineral spirits. <laughs> and that's funny. Court is in session. We are, we are in court today. All of us are in court today. Violence. 
Anybody ask y'all anything? It's if like, I'm sorry, I have court today. If you are away from your spouse who was trying to hurt you, yes. I have court today. So, so you, you can throw a can of mineral spirits. What about if you throw a can of Red Bull? Does it give you it one? It depends on like, the incident, I think, that you're referring to. That was not necessarily reactive violence. That was in a state of frustration or anger. And right, it keeps so, saying that this is okay. It's so odd you testimony. you throw a can of Red Bull in a state of frustration or anger, that's not reactive violence. No. Exactly. What about if you throw a bottle of vodka because your husband fell off the wagon? Is that reactive violence? Are you asking me hypothetically? I'm asking you, would that, would that be a characteristic of, of reactive violence? Throw a bottle of vodka because your husband fell off the wagon. If it's in the middle of an assault, perhaps. If it's independent of that. No. Right. So, for instance, if your husband was just having a couple of shots at the bar. Hello, BB-8. Again, you would need more information and context to right, make right. that okay. determination. All right. I, you don't think that's a, a reflection of reflective uh, of reaction Thank violence. You. And you'll agree with me. We will see if they can throw the second bottle. That's not reactive They probably violence. won't until redirect. If somebody's throwing multiple bottles, again, psychological violence and abuse is psychologically destabilizing, which destabilizes individuals' coping strategies. That is absolutely true. Is she saying that that makes it okay then to, the, the, to do the things? That's true. Um, is it your testimony that once you've thrown one bottle and missed, when you throw the second one, now it's reactive violence? That's not what I'm saying. Then what I are you saying? I don't think throwing bottles is acceptable in any context. Ah, that's the first time you've said that. Because she did testify yesterday that throwing things was okay in her way. I like the pace of this cross. The points land better and leaving that hang some of the is smart. That you uh, did. Good. I'm glad we get to the testing. One of the things that you uh, did was a, uh, was a form looked like uh, called a CTS two relationship behaviors form. Uh, the conflict tactic scale, correct. The, the, I agree so with CTS you, Valen. CTS-2 stands for conflict tactic scale. That's correct. Good morning. And this is one of the documents that um, you had with you on the on the stand yesterday. I had all my testing with me and all my clinical notes from my evaluation with Ms. Hurd. And you gave me a copy of it because you looked at it during the testimony. Because you asked me, so I gave it to you, yes. Right. All right. Um, but you have a good re recollection of what that test is about, the CTS-2 test. I have a very good memory and fair. a very good recollection. I oh. want to give the jury the most accurate and thorough information. I have a very good memory. 12 tests with so many questions. I wanted to just be as accurate as possible. The, I'm sure my memory asking. would miss some things that might be relevant. All right. So let's talk about the CTS-2. It's dated 9-26-2019. Uh, Correct. Right. You're welcome. 9 26 2019. And it goes through and it asks a whole series of questions about what you've done and what Dennis your easier to listen to That's for correct. sure. There's tons of these questions. Correct. And every single one of those questions is preceded by the same question, right? How often did this happen? in the past Welcome, Patricia. year. Correct. You knew that as, uh, as of 926, 2019, not a single one of the things that Ms. Heard identified happened to her in the last you, year. Correct. Right. She was oriented to a different time frame to get a checklist of those behaviors. Uh, oh, and, and that's okay? The, We're just cool with one it? One of the, the, uh, we just, we're just cool with she was oriented to uh, a different says, time. Please, how okay, often did okay. this happen in the past year? One okay. of the questions is my partner used force to make me have oral or anal sex. Warning. Correct. She went with zero on that, right? We're going to be getting I into have to see if you'd like to show again, me difficult topics. Do you have any recollection that she she didn't go with zero on that? 
I have a recollection at that point in time, she was framing those type of acts as angry sex. She and wasn't framing them. them as physical force, as most women don't on these measures. And you helped her to reframe it as something other than angry sex, didn't you, Doctor? My job was not to do treatment. My job was to do an evaluation, and that's what I did. Fair. That's All fair. Right. Um, so you did an evaluation, and one of the evaluations you did, and one of Very the high on rebuttal. diagnoses that you ultimately made relates to PTSD. That is correct. All right. And you No, I think they'll wait for redirect. They shouldn't bring up the photos Amber of her. Amber heard with PTSD It'll let her long spin them. before you made use of Thank the you. gold standard oh, we've got test for PTSD. Here. That is correct. Gold right. standard test. And I make the diagnosis of whoa, PTSD whoa, whoa. in my clinical practice without using the CAPS all the time. All right. So just so you and I are on the same page, and I think we are, uh, this gold standard test that I'm referring to is the CAPS-5. That is correct. That's the one that Dr. Dr. Curry Kirk used, correct? <laughs> correct. Right. Um, Dr. Curry. You didn't administer the CAP-5 until A, after you'd already diagnosed Amber Heard with PTSD. Interesting. Right? She had PTSD in 2019. She had PTSD in the beginning of 2021 when I evaluated her. And then she had PTSD in December 27th, 2021 when I administered the CAPS. That's correct. Evaluated right. by who, um, though? I think I asked a much more. And not to diminish, that. PTSD is, is staggering. You didn't diagnose. Uh, you I'm you just, didn't give the CAPS 5. Hold on, I'm going to strike that question altogether. Yeah, that you withdraw, again. counsel. I would start again. It's okay. You had already I diagnosed strike. With PTSD before you did the gold standard, correct? Before I administered the CAPS-5, there was enough data in the psychological testing and my clinical evaluation to establish that she met criteria for PTSD. What data that is, is that? Uh, um, you submitted a expert disclosure in this case on January 11th, 2022. I believe the attorney submitted that disclosure, yes. That's uh, fair. You participated in that? In the in the January eleventh, it was the same disclosure that went before. There were no changes on that. Did you reference the Caps Five in that at all? I don't believe I gave the results of the Caps Five to the attorneys at that point. All right. Um, you met with. Oh, I, I got dates here. I'm behind in the chat. Sorry, this we got to the, the, the finger happened. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Uh, you met with Amber Heard on September 26, 2019. I would love to have my cheat sheet, but I'll take your word for it. I'll share. Thank you. October 11, 2019. She would like to refresh her recollection. That's not how you ask generally. When did you give the CAPS 5? I've never seen an expert call it a cheat sheet. The CAPS 5 was administered the last time that I saw Miss Heard. I saw her over as stated multiple times over the past two and a half years and having not seen her in about a year to get an accurate assessment of her current symptoms. Having had all the background information, the CAPS-5 is a great structured clinical interview to do that. Remember, right. so Dr. Curry a year also you, didn't have her notes on cross test. and that's that appropriate. Um, and you did it over Zoom. Completely that is appropriate. Correct. All right. Um, Oh, don't you guys being here is appreciation enough. I and I appreciate the super chats, uh, but you guys yeah, being here and liking and subscribing seven. is a huge support to let me do this. I mean, I've been a lawyer almost 17 years. I did 10 years in trial work that and is this is the most fun. I love being here, breaking down this trial with y'all. So <laughs> you being here is supporting the channel. So don't ever feel bad. Umbridge sure. wants to know what cover, it's just uh, the witness which right one. Now, so. I tried that. I'm in court today with my hub, sure. and bless yeah. his German soul. He was like, "Who's court? Um, you, you can, <laughs> Emily's court." <laughs> Doctor Hughes, you can actually help with that question. This is like twenty, more than twenty pages long. Right? It's about twenty pages. Right. All right. Let's get a copy of it. So now they're dealing with documents that they're um, going to be showing her, and this is why she doesn't get to have her notes. This is a series of questions up at the that thing. You she has to, to remember. PTSD. Correct. Thank you. So this is the test for PTSD. Um, Remember, and you recognize the first page. This is the first page that you um, you filled out. That's your your handwriting. That, that's correct. She shouldn't be hearing this for the first time. Um, we'll talk about no court next week. The judge is at a conference. 
So it's dark next week. That's what they call it when court's closed. It's dark. I'd like to publish the first page. Though I like having a bye week. I think evidence. we should call that. Yeah, you need to move Is it into evidence, evidence before you publish yes, it. I, I have a copy of this before I... Was, he's just publishing the first page? Any objection to the first? Okay, first page in evidence? They're, I think they're capitalizing on it during cross. That's what they do. They should, but you should already have it. This is your expert, your expert. You should have a copy of the test. I have the ability to scroll down so I can't see the rest of this. Right. It's a brand new exhibit. I'm sure I'll get you a copy of it. Thank you. You want to tell me that you don't have the DSM for um, what your your expert, I'd Don like Hughes, to to did on, for Amber Heard? Really? You don't have it, defense? Come on. Come on now. Can we put up the second page? Are you putting the second page in evidence? Not yet. Then I can't put it up. Oh, I'm sorry. You can't publish it till it's an evidence like council. To, I'd like the witness to see the second. The witness can see the second page. Thank you. This is the second page. Didn't say publish it. And how you do it. Watching from Correct. Dollywood. Good morning. All right. And then we'll go to the third page. Let's, we stand let's Dolly here. The third page. Um, I think Amber's team has brought up Johnny Depp's friendship with Marilyn Manson a lot. I haven't heard anything about Roman Polanski. They brought up now Marilyn Manson every time they can. Um, entitled Scoring. I Correct. haven't seen where he went. He might have gotten so heated for using score, his phone. He got admonished at some earlier about things, it. You look at things, right? You look at frequency and intensity. Correct. Yeah, everybody's Those got are the candy two today. factors you use to score. Very lenient Correct. of the court to have candy right. on the desk. It's strange. Can we go to the fourth page of this document and just show it to the witness? I agree with you, CJ. They're going to get into the way she so, administered the test so they can call Dr. Curry back up. Dr. Hughes, this is Dr. Curry is a PTSD expert, not an IPV where, expert. Uh, other than the identifying information. I think where, Amber will be next. There's any B read into the. I just don't know when that'll right. be, depending uh, on this. The class. cat's five. You said the cat's D. Yeah, I, I misspoke. Okay. Yes. This is the. Um, the criterion A, which means that in order to, as I said yesterday, we'll talk to about obtain a how this is going later. PTSD, you have to have sustained a very specific traumatic event. That's the first D to get through the door. Yeah, on cross, you All don't right. see it as much because they're so, more focused on the lawyer. That happens, and that's okay that it happens. I saw Octo in the chat. Hey, Octo. Your Honor, I'm gonna. <laughs> um, I, I'd like to be able to get them a copy of this. It is a, is is it, it too possible early to take the break or take a break? A little bit, if you right. can. Like really? Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, you can call it a nothing muffin instead of a nothing burger for sure. All right. So, do you recognize the first page or the fourth page of this document? Yes, I do. And the, the handwriting on the fourth page is yours. It's all my handwriting. All right. The entirety of it is your. I'm going to move uh, this uh, document into evidence. All her handwriting. Um, it's interesting. He's so smooth uh, on questioning, the and then page. we're laying foundation to enter things into evidence, and he's like, "I don't. Yes. We're, what?" Odd, what um, but also probably used to depositions. Her testimony is weird. I, I like his style. I like his is. style of cross a lot. I really do like his style of cross. Um, You're still on 1247. 1247. Diagnosis, yes. Says, you want to move the entirety of 1247 in. She's yes. like, I think it feels like PTSD. Do you that have a copy seems of 1247? Like it's exhibit 1247. I mean, I generally don't do research on stuff. We're going by what's happening in court, but after this, I will, as I as my own curiosity takes me down a rabbit hole, of course, because ADHD. Um, the way he chokes up after she answers a question um, oh, it, comes off as he's not doing well with this cross. 1435. Um, Defendants 14. Okay. And I mean, that's, we're all going to have different opinions of this cross. His style I like better, but yes, he does kind of go, uh, uh, there is some stumbling. Um, and yes, Amber Pearl, she did just admit that the PTSD started before Johnny, um, which is a very, a very important note. Um, oh, yes, Octa, we are way down the rabbit hole at this point, and I'm still behind in the chat. I'm trying to catch up, y'all. Amber's heard this before. What is he moving in? Don't tell me. I think he's moving in. That you haven't the seen this. In. They're yeah, arguing the over this um, report, the scale for the I don't think I have an objection to PTSD. No objection. She Maybe should have already had this. This is their Which expert. Uh, Being like, I don't know. You've seen it. I'm oh, sorry. And it's okay to take a minute. They're going to slow this down, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. But the defense would have already had this long ago. 
No objection, Your Honor. All right, so it's going to show the evaluation too, I'm right? Yes, Umbridge. Yes, it um, is. Defendants fourteen thirty-five. We want to make this twelve forty-seven plaintiffs, correct? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll, does Your Honor want to back? I, I, I kind of need it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Thank you. We'll just I, I kind of need it. The judge says that's funny. I'm trying to get through some of these real quick. Um, I'm waiting for her to snap. I love your commentary on baking muffins for tomorrow. I mean, we're going to all need muffins for this trial. It's like popcorn or muffins. Fourth page where we're Thank you. My partner told me, please right. don't stay up late. Um, so I said, but Johnny, so it's 3 a.m. in New Zealand. This, this is going to um, going well, me thinks. Is, new to Lawnards. Uh, Welcome, new Lawnards. The Lawnard. event you said was the worst. Um, and what you have filled in here is three words. IPV by Johnny, right? Correct. Interesting. All right. And then what happened. I like seeing how this all happens. Box, and you've I not it. written a, a single thing in the box, right? Because I've already spent 20 some odd hours with Ms. Hurd, I know what goes in that box. Is if you look at the top, it says administer the life check checklist or an other structured trauma screen. That screen had already been conducted. Right, but there's a box on the gold standard test that asks what happened. And it says, how old were you? And she's like, how I don't care about involved? the test. Who else was involved? Was anyone seriously injured or killed? Was anyone in life danger? And none of that information you provide in your um, analysis on the CAPS file. Your Honor, I, I hesitate to object, but that's very compact. It is. It is. Okay, I'll just <laughs> if you want to rephrase. It is very <laughs> compound. I love Dennis, okay, and he's like, it is. Way. It is very compound. The first question is, how old were you? <laughs> All I of the information that would go in that box is contained in my 80 plus clinical notes of my evaluation of Ms. Heard up until this point. It would have been incredibly redundant to do that again here. But you knew other people would review this, didn't you? Kim, it's And I knew be that they would have my clinical notes as well. Oh, so they're supposed to parse through your clinical <laughs> notes. Just, they have my so notes. They can figure out what Yikes. you chose to be the anchoring of that. I don't love this. I didn't choose to be the anchor. The client chooses to the anchor to identify what the worst event is for them. You wrote IPV by Johnny. That's what you determined to be the anchor. Probably. Of that. When I asked Ms. Hurd once again of the traumatic events that she experienced in her life, which one is the worst? This Welcome. is what she indicated. Okay. Oh. But you provided no details with respect to it. There are de a plethora of details in my 80 page is a handwritten single spaced clinical notes. Are handwritten notes single spaced? I have questions. All right, let's go to the next page. I love that we can hear Umber to stop Mike. Right. We need to make sure that we have those notes in there. We need the you notes. felt it appropriate that was interesting. to fill this page out, uh, didn't you, doctor? Well, these are the questions Thank you for about the, the symptoms. Words. So I'm asking specific questions and getting her responses. Didn't you know this already? <laughs> well, I was making sure at this point, having not seen Ooh. her for a year, what is the trauma expression at this time? It can change right, over time. We got a screenshot. We got a screenshot. It could go away. If Throwing you get better, it, it can get worse. Right. And it's my pen in my mouth, so I don't hurl it across my desk and then lose it because my cat's knocking off my desk. A couple more pages in. So let's, let's she filled out some area very two. with very much detail right. and other area with not very much detail, and that's Page what they're getting at. Seven twenty. Now I like the pacing here. I mean, at least it gives us a moment a to chat. Of, uh, boxes that you filled in on oh, this are almost a fifty k. I, need, I haven't even, I don't even think I've shared it to Twitter yet today. Let's look at item but y'all don't forget to do the YouTube things. B5. I can ask all the time. I forget. You don't <laughs> cringing provide in sociologist. any indication of what kind of triggers, I'm what kind of too. reminders trigger these reactions. This is. She answered that on the previous questions. All right. And okay, it, let's go to the previous questions. Don't cherry pick on cross either. How long does it take to recover? She has some difficulty recovering. Okay. This will all be used by Dr. Curry. How often has this happened in the past month? Oh, we're sending you love, sweet and sound. Thank Correct. you for sharing. And we talked about how these things are scored, and we looked at, you got to look at frequency and intensity, right? Correct. 
and you left the frequency Look, warm box water, yes. blank. Oh no, if she said several times a month, then that's what this the is frequency very is. good cross. And you didn't fill that frequency box in at all. Correct. Because she told me it was frequently several times a month, which is one of the anchors in coding. So why doesn't it say cast? several times? Right, let's look at the next one. So I didn't say several times slash month. The very next box. Good luck on your dissertation, Kathy. Again, this is scored by frequency and intensity. How often in the past month? Correct. Blank. Pardon? How often in the past month? You left that one blank again, right? She Dr. tells Curry. me it happens at least twice a week. So certainly I could multiply two times four and put an eight. And you certainly could have written the number two. Yes, I think Dr. Curry helped but prepare it the cross. Two. That's her job. It's oh. happening two times a week. All right. So two times a week towards the times the number of, of months. Now you got two digits in, instead of one. Lisa, right? sometimes That's it feels that way. to write that down. This is in, in a one month period. So it would have been a four week period. Right. How, after, how often in the past month? That's what it says. Correct. That is right. not to answer that question. Uh, he's trying to nitpick her with details page. while he's nitpicking her with details, but this isn't going to go well for her. And scoring is frequency and because intensity. How she's often a bit in the past month? Loose, it seems, with these forms. Again, and Dr. Blank. Curry, the expert in PTSD, if you look on the right -hand box, is going to come in and say, this is a bit loose. The frequency and the severity. So if that's you can why. see where I circled moderates happening more than twice a month. That's where I'm indicating the frequency of the symptoms. So over special. here. So she's okay. saying it's not blank. But you're, she's filling it oh, out here, moderate. Are you moderate. skipping a step? You're supposed to do intensity so. and frequency. All of and you in the medical profession. it's happening more than twice a month. This that is, is why a notes are important. Indicator. All right. Um, this is why notes matter. But it's fair that she's saying go. how many times and she's circling it over here. Moderate at least box. two times in the past month. So... Are they trying to make Again, fetch happen? Maybe, but this is also, you know, we need to do month, these things many, in detail. How important parts of event have you difficulty remembering? Number of important aspects. She Info. might have left parts out, but well, they I also might be leaving parts out because it's cross. Where she indicates she has important aspects that are missing. But, they narrow it down because it's cross. But all you have to put a number in here. You right. know, you had to, you knew how to score this thing. Well, this measure actually doesn't get scored it's by moderate the over there all right you're you know something you're right Let, let's look at the next one i know Did, was she just saying i know i'm right that's funny the next one gets scored by agreed the that's blank right well i did not code it as a ptsd symptom okay let's oh, go to the next one not a symptom at least they're going through this and then dr curry will be able to go back through this um, and Dr. Curry is the PTSD the expert. Month, have you felt that way as a percentage? And there are notes so on as these. you can see, I circled 20 to 30% of the time, right? Yeah, it's just, as it, it just, I'm putting it on the right side in the box <sighs> where I'm coding the instrument, which is we're, fair. We're going to talk about the right side in a minute. Um, you took issue with the way that, um, Dr. Curry did this test engine. It's a Correct. clinician administered right. test. So it's proper that but, she's filling it out. Your test in every instance, yes, where Dr. Curry can advise number of times to prep for cross and to fill in the blank, you leave it blank. They're on the right side of the document. All right, so she's just talking. This talk is how I right do it. This is Let's how I that. do it, but I don't know how that'll come across when Dr. Curry comes back up in rebuttal and is like, This is how I do it because she criticized After Dr. Curry's work. Did so the caps five for the you might need a pondered uh, anchoring the three word anchoring event IPV by Johnny. You went back through again. Caitlin, that's a good catch. Well, uh, maybe I should consider childhood trauma as well, right? I wanted to test for the limits and see at this point in time, Miss um, Heard had had a child, and sometimes when people have children, their trauma gets evoked. Is she having those symptoms as well? She already had, based on this. This is interesting that PTSD what happened is from the interpersonal violence. I wanted to see if there were any additional symptoms. She already had PTSD. Right. That's what and she's just said. You knew that she had had severe child abuse as a young person. That is correct. She grew up in a home full of heroin addicts, right? Opiate abuse, yes. Yeah. And uh, heroin's an opiate. And there, is it not? There was IPV between her parents. Correct. And so you wanted to make sure that 
there wasn't some impact with this childhood trauma in the diagnosis of PTSD. Yes. That's right. what Dr. Curry is probably and going so to say. And so you decided to give her the test again. Well, I didn't give it again. What's called testing the limits. I went back to some of the um, questions where she answered in the affirmative and said, and is this also happening vis-a-vis -vis your childhood abuse? Are you also having intrusive thoughts and feelings about childhood? Are you avoiding thinking about things about childhood? Is that happening for you now as well? All right. So there are a series of notations on the right-hand side. Let's go to page um, five of 20. So they're still the going test. through the CAPS-5, right. and they're going through the CAPS-5 to talk about the, how the, she administered the, right the test, how she the determined um, right. that Amber Heard had PTSD from the so relationship So the way you tested for childhood PTSD is to write a notation in the corner and answer a couple of questions. Same test. Well, I wasn't administering a whole CAPS again. What I was doing was seeing, as we know with people who have what we call polyvictimization or revictimization, someone could in fact meet criteria for the PTSD from the domestic violence, but then they're also she said she wasn't administering some it. symptoms as a result of the childhood abuse. Both can occur. Right. It was a re she said but she Mr. wasn't administering isn't it. Responsible for her childhood abuse. That is correct. Right. Interesting. And the way you tested this childhood abuse PTSD is you made notations on the right hand in the right hand column of a, of a form that you partially filled out for the IPV by Johnny, right? Well, I disagree with the partially filled out. The frequency was clearly filled out in the box where we score the caps. But yes, I did write but about the But if you're not giving it, why would you score it? Nope. I'm so confused. They talked about that yesterday in testimony, Colleen, um, that in the nursing notes is the pr appropriate way that the gold standard test for PTSD for childhood trauma should be administered. You? If there were any affirmatives and I needed to go further, I could have administered another CAPS-5. There were not. I did not need to do that. Okay. So you chose not to do a second CAPS-5, although you knew that she had suffered from severe childhood trauma. No, because she wasn't suffering symptoms at that point in time PTSD symptoms from the childhood trauma. Right. How do you determine which symptoms are from what? I've got questions. Mr. Dennison, are you moving to a different topic now? Or yes. Okay. All right. Wants a wants time, time for the morning break. Our morning break then. All right. Ladies there and gentlemen, uh, we'll take our 15 minute break. Please do not discuss this case with anybody. No, do any outside research. Okay. All right. Morning break. Um, she looks like she's standing up to get down, not standing up for the jury to leave. She might be standing up for the jury to leave. Um, but the audience doesn't need to stand up to, for the jury to leave. It's interesting that they do. They just don't need to. Um, interesting, interesting testimony so far. I'm going to go through and do some super chats while we're on the break. I see that we have almost 50,000 of you in here. We'll go I'll ahead just and take, ask to do the likey, subscribe each. Yes. Yes. May I get a copy of the new exhibits from them? Completely appropriate I'm question. Sure. I'm yeah, you, you, I don't know if we can do it before, but we'll certainly get them to you. Well, I mean, I need to be able to sure. uh, redirect, and I had never seen these. So. Okay, well, well, we'll, 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 we'll go through it. That's right. How is All right. It's, 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 although it's in your exhibit list. Oh, that's yeah. fine. I think if it's in my exhibit list, if they just tell me. They tell you the fine. exhibit numbers, that's fine. We'll work okay. through it. Okay, we'll take a, let's take a recess of 1140 then, okay? Thank All you. Right. Thank All right, exactly 1140. How, uh, here's why I'm saying it's got to be in the exhibit list, because it is, it is a test that their expert administered and it's a test their expert administered regarding Amber Heard. So if it's a test their expert administered um, regarding Amber Heard, then the, the only way that they got it is if the defense disclosed it to them, they're not just getting everything from the doctor. I mean, they are through discovery, but the, the team that called the doctor and deposed the doctor would have had this. It would have come up at deposition. I don't think they don't have it. Curry testified she gives a separate caps for each traumatic event identified. Curry did testify to that. And they're going to go through the way Curry administers the caps as a PTSD expert and the way that this um, forensic psychologist goes through the caps as an IPV expert. This is why Depp's team had Dr. Curry. So that's why. Um, so didn't Dr. Curry use a test to gauge if Amber Heard was lying? Yes. Did this doctor do the same thing considering the past? Um, 
She didn't say that she did a test for malingering in depth yet or for feigning, but she talked about um, accounting for it or attributing for it. So that is an interesting, it's an interesting quirk. Um, I don't know why my camera's looking a little bit fuzzy. I'm going to go look at my settings real quick. I don't know why it is, but if it is, I apologize. Um, it might just be a little bit of buffering. So anyway, we'll, we'll take the blur. We'll take the blur. Um, MA and psych here, clinical exams are only valid if used as indicated. They're rigorously tested um, by included method. They must be given very specifically. Yeah, she wasn't giving this. She wasn't administering this. And she said it. She said, I'm not administering it. I'm just um, I'm just going through it. And and I had already determined she had PTSD, so I'm not administering it, which was very interesting. I love that the law nerd community is growing. It is growing. We ride. We're at 50,000 in the chat. It's amazing. Per ISTSS scoring requirements, a symptom is considered present only if its corresponding item severity score is rated to moderate threshold or higher. We, again, we have to go with what the jury's going to see. I appreciate the knowledge in the chat. Y'all are wonderful. But the jury doesn't know that yet until it's presented to them. And we will see when it's presented to them soon. Um, well, not soon, in rebuttal. Wouldn't a PTSD diagnosis post CAPS-5 um, be biased since she was diagnosed for multiple times prior to the exam? I don't know. And that's, again, for their expert to come and get into. She wants the docs. Why? So Nadelhoff um, can pass them to Herd's PR guy at the end of the day. Well, they're all coming in as evidence, so they're going to be available, but they should have already had these. I am trying to keep up with the chats. Um, I'm trying to keep up with the chats the best I can, so we're going to keep going through those. I can't wait for Dr. Well, Dr. Curry won't rip into this doctor directly. I think Dr. Curry's more professional than that, but Dr. Curry will absolutely give opinion based on the way this was administered because it will undercut a lot of what this expert said. And the reason it's important is to undercut everything this expert said, because this expert was presenting a lot of facts as if they were facts. She was saying, Johnny did this and Johnny did that. And he has obsessive this and that it went outside the bounds of my opinion is this this is consistent with this. And she walked it back because she had to on cross, but it went to a lot of Amber Heard's reports of these things are consistent with this. And that's what her testimony should have lived in yesterday, but they let her expand it. Um, um, seems to me like she conducted the test as she would in treating practice rather than in prep for court. It seems that way and not a forensic way, Rebecca, it is a point well taken. Um, my son takes a final law school test today and bar in July. Congratulations to your son. It is studying for the bar is a whole job in itself. The U.S. justice system is so different from Sweden. Yes, we're different. We're, we're special over here. Emily, thank you so much. You're welcome. As a male um, presenting survivor, it helps, definitely helps lessen the triggering moments. I am absolutely here to help lessen the triggering moments and at least try to talk through them. That's why our chat rules are our chat rules uh, to give a safe space to have conversation. Can Dr. Curry talk to the lawyers during break? Yes, she can. Um, she's there to advise as an expert. How much hearsay did she use yesterday? <laughs> are you talking about objections or how much you hearsay the expert used? Experts are allowed to use hearsay. Um, Emily D. Baker's a real MVP. Well, thank you. Cause she does these long AF streams without, I mean, I'm used to being in court for trial and there's no bathroom breaks. Are jurors allowed to bring in notes to cross-reference on new testimonies? Yes, like using the notes they took from Dr. Curry to Dr. Hughes. That's part of their deliberative process or should be, but they are allowed to take notes. How many notes they're taking is very interesting um, to me. And I don't know, we're not in the court, we don't see them, but I love seeing those reports coming out of court at the end of the day. After Depp's team brings in rebuttal when Amber's team rests, can Amber's team then rebut? Is that a word? Um, if so, did the rebuttal stop? No, the the party with the burden should bring in rebuttal. I don't know if they'll allow a sir rebuttal because Amber Heard also bears a burden for the cross complaints. We'll see what this judge's preference are. I haven't looked um, to see if she's allowed a sir rebuttal from Heard's team. She might. Um, she might. Are we audience standing for the jury? Front row is legal team. Lay people probably following suit, not knowing any better. Yeah, it feels like Catholic mass for me. When somebody stands up, everybody stands up. It's just like, it's what we do. Um, I'm just saying, if you ever go to court, you don't have to do that. Like, it's okay. It's okay. Um, what if a psych specialist was called to a jury like this? Would they have to admit their expertise and excuse themselves? Um, that would be brought up generally from, uh, let's see, generally from the court when they ask in voir dire, it would be brought up and then the lawyers would get to decide if they need to be excused. They generally don't have to have to be excused, but the judge 
and the attorneys can make that determination. It might be hard for them to not uh, bring more interpretation than what they see in court. So according to her, growing up seeing uh, addiction and IDV didn't cause any uh, trauma, only being a supposed victim of it did. It, it seemed like that's what she was saying, but I think she was, I think what she was saying was childhood trauma wasn't presenting at the moment. This is what was presenting at the moment. Um, Christina says, I'm a mandatory reporter. These doctors are playing fast and loose with reporting so much violence and none of them calling law enforcement. It's an interesting point that I think will come up more with her reporting or treating docs because the forensic shouldn't be reporting anything. Really. The forensic is just supposed to do forensics, the treating docs. I think that will come up more, um, stated yesterday, violent with bottles. So no doctor, we will see what she says, um, as they continue across love how much I'm commenting on this instead of doing my MSC psychology dissertation. Oops. Love your commentary. I mean, I feel like you're, we're all learning watching this together. Um, I've gotten some pretty complicated trauma. Gotta say, I can't tell you which symptom it's from. I'd be interested to know how that's set, assessed. Dr. Curry broke that down really well in her direct testimony. There's a lot of weird things in her answers, and he isn't pointing them out. To a non-law person, it sort of feels like he's floundering. There are some, there are definitely some starts, starts and stops and some, eh, eh, eh. Um, but we'll see what happens. I like his style overall better than the jackhammer style because her answers you're allowed to hear what she's saying and you're allowed to see her walking things back. What qualification do jury members have? They get questioned. Do they understand the psychological scales? No. It is the lawyer's job to help the lawyer's job to help the doctors explain it so the jury understands. The jury can't really bring in their independent knowledge into this in that way. Question, isn't it a HIPAA violation for doctors discussing patient info with a non-treating doctor? No, there's HIPAA waivers for all of these forensics to be allowed. And try Oh, thank you for bringing dyslexia out as we can do whatever anyone else can. I'm dyslexic and an RN. I, I talk about it mostly in context of I will mispronounce things, letters will flip around, and sometimes it is hard for me to read things, especially if they're in all caps. So I always share. Um, I always share for that reason. So because that's, you know, I think it's upfront and it's helpful and it's why some of the rules are the rules. Could things be... Could the things the defense is asking about have been in the folder, possibly, and maybe she did not give all her notes over to the defense and got caught. She had to give them to the defense. I mean, it's it's the Caps 5 she gave to Amber Heard. I can't imagine Heard's team doesn't have it somewhere. They might just not know where. BBN Turner said, highly unprofessional not to complete each assessment line in medical records. That's Medical Professional 101, even if not applicable, must assign an N.A., and I mean, we will definitely see. She was saying, I'm not using it to diagnose. Well, then why are you filling through it then? Will JD's teams clear up the timeliness in closing or the timelines in closing? I think they need to, or a demonstrative. They need to, for sure. Um, if it is violent DV, would they require to notify law enforcement? The doctors generally should be, and that's going to come up, I think, um, for sure. Kathy said, I'm not getting morning notifications. YouTube. Um, sometimes that's YouTube. I was a member until I became, I completely understand not being a member. If you're in North America, text Emily.com. I send out notifications as well at the text crew. So text Emily.com. It's free to join. Just text it from your phone and just say hello and it will join you. And then you will get notifications from me. YouTube doesn't always notify. It's a, it's a quirk. We love YouTube. It's a quirk. The doctor assuming that Amber Heard's symptoms are connected to is so inappropriate. She should have absolutely tested for childhood trauma and not just her experience. That will come up on redirect with Dr. Curry, I'm sure. Um, I am, tr again, trying to get to questions. Happy birthday this week from Pensacola. Thank you. It is my birthday later this week. Um, it's my husband's birthday tomorrow. I love your hair. Stumbled on you for this trial and now I've been here every day. Well, you're welcome, Holly. Um, we dyed the hair purple like a year ago when we had 100,000 subscribers. It was a thing and now it has stayed. <laughs> Mark said we have digital patient record system in Holland, including software for questionnaires, no more paperwork and handwritten notes. That would be fascinating. I'm not going to go on a ramble about the medical system in the United States. We're not going to have, a, we're not going to have a ramble about it. Did she say someone else administered the test? Not this test, this test. She's saying those are her notes, but she wasn't, she's saying she's using the test, but not administering it, which is interesting. What's your opinion of Dr. Curry as an expert versus the current one? I think Dr. Curry stuck more narrowly to the task that was assigned her and did a good job sticking to the task that was assigned her. I do. 
But I think that this cross has been really good in pointing out the things this doc has used and said and the the people she's testified for, the lectures she's given. I think this, the amount of, well, Amber said this and Amber said that, that she presented as facts makes it hard for me to listen to this expert the same way as Dr. Curry, who was very careful to steer away from that and very careful to not do that. So that's that's what it is. Um, psych adjacent field here. If assessments are not implemented with fidelity, that absolutely calls the results and reliability into question. Yes, I agree. Um, we'll see if it comes up. Can you say hello to Rafina? Hello, Rafina. I hope I pronounced that right for you, Lexi. Greetings. Thank you. I'm going to get to, oh, you guys, we're going to, we're going to just, we're going to keep, we're going to keep going. Will the amount of male versus female jury make a difference? I don't know in this case if they will. I think you need a balanced jury to give perspectives from both sides. And I think it's important to have a balanced jury to give perspectives from both sides. Um, uh, we'll see. I haven't seen it be a huge issue, but I did criminal, not civil, but I haven't seen it be a huge issue in most cases. I have seen it be an issue in a few instances. As a psych um, special graduate specializing in childhood trauma, these evaluations are very interesting. Uh, being very familiar with the diagnostic criterion process. I'm sure professionals everywhere are watching this taking notes. I'm sure. But this doctor, thank you for the compliments. This doctor teaches expert testimony, teaches how to do this, lectures on expert testimony. And that's interesting too, because she's up there with her notes with like, it's just a post-it and being kind of snarky. And it just came across for me as a little less professional because it was like, well, there was this incident and this incident and this incident and giving them weight and credibility when she wasn't there. She doesn't know. And she can't testify to that. So that, um, I don't get it. Why does it matter why she threw hit stuff at JD? She did it. He didn't story end. Not for this doctor. This doctor is talking about reactional violence and seem to say, well, it's different in a circumstance of someone's reacting to what's being done to them versus if someone is, um, if someone is initiating and that's what she was seeming to say, but I didn't love it. Court TV has a poll, which expert they believe Dr. Curry, Dr. Hughes. That's interesting. Maybe we'll put a poll up in a little bit. Um, when when I'm caught up, we will put a poll up. The lawyer sounded unprepared. Where did you buy your green coffee cup? Thanks in advance. This is on my Amazon shop. Um, I got this one at Starbucks, but you can get them on Amazon. They're Stanley cups. Um, it's in my description box and stuff. If you want to go look at exactly the one I have, but you can find them on Amazon from Stanley. You can probably find them at like REI and like sporting goods stores. It's fantastic. I love it. Shouldn't the lawyer ask, can hetero men be DV victims too? I thought he should have, but he kind of let it go. Um, but I thought he should have followed up on that. But I don't know. I think the implication was clear. And we all went, interesting. She's, even when she was defining men being victims, she was not defining men being victims vis-a-vis -vis women being perpetrators. And when she was defining women being perpetrators, she was not defining women being perpetrators vis-a-vis -vis men being victims. And that I thought was very interesting. They might save it for argument. They might save it and ask Dr. Curry about it. I don't know. And that's very interesting. Um, it was it was notable. How notable it'll be to the jury, we will see. So we will see. Giving doctor giving the doctor the rope to self-destruct. And that sometimes when they don't rein in a witness and they weren't reining in this witness a lot, they weren't cutting her off the way we saw in previous testimony. They weren't cutting her off the way we saw other um, cross-examining styles with doctors. And I think it's appropriate that they were letting her go because this, this lawyer, better than, than some of the others that we've seen, is actually listening to what she says and then asking the question. It doesn't feel like he's going down a checklist. Obviously, there's a direction this cross-examination is going in. There's topics it's going in. But he didn't. Um, he listened to the answers and then asked follow-up questions before moving on. And I thought that that was good. But when you're thinking on your feet like that, not all of your questions are artful. Um, it leads to misspeaking. It leads to flustered moments. And we've seen flustered moments from all the attorneys on this side. And I will probably poke fun at all of them, um, even though that was me too when I was in court. So there's moments where you're just like... I, I, you're like, so you were in the shower and you didn't hear the gunshot because you were in the shower because you were in the shower. Like we, we all have those moments in court. It's one of my favorite things about Legally Blonde is that moment happens when you're trying, your brain is trying to catch up to your next question. I know it's off topic, but have you seen the recent Dave Chappelle incident? No, I have not. Um, 
I have been very, very down the rabbit hole in this trial. And um, I had a band boosters meeting for my kid who's going into high school next year last night. I'm very proud. I'm a very proud band mom. So um, that's where I was last night. So I've not seen much on the news. I'm, I'm, I'm ADHD. I get very narrowly focused into things like this trial. Question, have you seen the video of the PR guy from Amber Heard taking papers from the lawyer at the end of the day? Is that allowed or normal? I addressed this at the top of this stream too, and I'm going to address it again since we have 51,000 people here, and that's more than we had at the beginning of the day. It's not unusual to me um, because he's part of their team that they're handing him things. The only time that's a problem for me is if we see things out in the media that are sealed or not admitted into court yet. If it's just notes of talking points, that's the PR, that's the PR agent's job is to give the media their headlines. And now that we're in Amber Heard's case, we're going to see the media getting headlines from Amber Heard's side because we have her witnesses. Some of that might be the new PR guy, but some of that's just that the narrative switches as we get into the different testimony. And so I'm not, I don't know, I'm not like shook by it, I suppose. I don't think it's uh, completely improper. He wasn't in the well during testimony. He's not sitting in the front row insinuating his legal team. But at the beginning of the day, the judge talked to the lawyers and then uh, Bretta Hoft or Umbridge, as I call her because of her tone, went to talk to him about something. And I think it was advising him again to not use his phone. Anyone else would have been yeeted out of court after using their phone three times yesterday. I think the judge is trying to give a lot of leeway here so she doesn't get pushback of not being fair. So joined as a member yesterday. You've got me totally hooked. Well, welcome to the channel. I'm like, did you forget to send out a text this morning? I did send out a text. If you didn't get one, I'm sorry. The text should have gone out. I'll send another one once court resumes, just to remind everybody. And this, um, it looks like the camera was starting to shift. So we might be resuming soon. It's hard for me to listen to what Dr. Hughes is testifying to because of her snark. It's very off-putting. And the jury might find it that way, or they might find it appropriate um, on cross being like, well, he's coming for her and it's fine. It also seems as if she also discounted the bipolar self-report from Amber's personal nurse. They didn't ask her about that yet. May the fourth be with all of you. Yes, I'm a nerd. So may the fourth be with everyone. Um, she changed her glasses. I thought so. And they took away her notes. She's saying she has a good recollection of memory yet constantly references. It's interesting that they took her notes. And I saw a number of you asking real quick when Dr. Curry will be back. After Amber Heard rests her case, there will be a there will be time for rebuttal witnesses, and that's when it would be appropriate for Dr. Curry to come back. I don't think Amber Heard's team will call Dr. Curry. Question: If we get to the end of week six, as Amber Heard rests her case, can the jury can the judge deny rebuttal because of time? It would be very hard if she'd already promised a rebuttal. It would be very hard for her to do so because it's part of the case you strategize for. Comment, the audience standing might must be a Southern thing. We do it in Texas. Our pleadings also end in prayer where we summarize relief requested. Interesting. I didn't know that. It would be odd for me, I think, to see prayer in court. But that's, that. I mean, if it's part of the court tradition, but that would be interesting for me. But I practiced trial work in Southern California. Can Amber Heard, um, could Amber Heard suffer SA as a child? And now I have no idea, not a doctor. The doctors should testify to that if that is an issue. Are her notes time stamped in any way that can be traced or are they pen and paper? I have no idea. It looks like they're pen and paper. Uh, please, anyone know when Amber takes the stand. I mean, it should be later today. It should be after this witness. I hope Dr. Curry advises JD's team of the right questions to ask. I'm sure they're doing that on break. Dr. Hughes appears very unprofessional and seems to have an ax to grind. They're trying to point that out with her previous work. Hello from Ireland, found you through H3. Love your content. Thank you. And I've been hooked to your coverage of this trial. I think we're all hooked to the trial. I love that you all are saying it's me, but this trial is fascinating. Question, do you think she wouldn't talk to the police because if she got caught lying, she could get charged? But with the psychologist, she couldn't. I don't know if she wanted to go to the police. I mean, when she did call the police, she didn't report then. So I don't, I don't know the intention there, and I don't know what the theory is there, and I don't want to speculate wildly about it. Shouldn't they ask um, how she didn't know? No notes. Um, not sure what it's referring to, but they, they should be asking more about the notes. I think they can. All right. She said, bring in the jury. I think Johnny's lawyer wanted to let it hang there to show she has bias. I think so too. Um, and I'm going to try to get to some of the other super chats too. Media expert psychologist says JD is guilty. Um, that would be an interesting headline. I don't doubt the media would do it because that's not what 
she testified to. Even mischaracterizing this witness would annoy me. Love your channel. Also, plot twist. Amber Heard's new PR team were the people that leaked the Supreme Court draft to take the heat off of Amber. That's funny. Um, I appreciate that you put your joking in there because sometimes I do need a sarcasm indicator when I'm streaming. I don't always catch it, but that is pretty funny. That is pretty funny. Um, hello, hello, band parents. Miss Heard's violence towards ex wife allowed. I'm surprised they haven't brought it up on Cross yet, and I'm wondering why at this point. I'm very much wondering why. And I'm wondering if it's not coming in until Amber testifies, but I'm very much wondering why. Why? Question for rebuttal. Can Johnny's team bring in a new witness like Amber? Yes, they can. They can bring in new witnesses on rebuttal that they have not called yet, if it's relant. Um, I've caught you from Australia. Thank you. I'll be in bed by the time you read this, question. but I'm saying to watch Johnny Depp's lawyer skewer here. I mean, hopefully you're not in bed yet. We're not done yet on cross. Um, reactive violence could go both Why ways. Put a, yes. Uh, back up plaintiff's, yes, uh, it can. I mean, I'm here for it. Do you think they put um, Hughes' testimony again, before Amber's to try to prep the jury for potential five. outbursts? Maybe. Um, I have other thoughts on this. I'll try to do it at the break. You didn't administer this until you already had Dr. Curry's scores, did you? Oh. That's not correct. No. You, you administered it after Dr. Curry made a disclosure, correct? That's not correct. Interesting. You administered it Um after Dr. Curry had administered hers. I learned that in late February when she submitted her report, but I had no way of knowing that in December of 2021. So she hadn't seen it. And you didn't make any reference to this uh, in your disclosures until That's after fair. Dr. Curry made reference to hers, right? I don't recall the date of the final disclosure or the fourth disclosure. Jamie, you're welcome. Right. Can we go to the next page? That's a fair question, but it's also a fair answer. The, We're going to celebrate go with you, the Melissa. The page will blow that up. The moderators are so appreciated. I couldn't do this without them. Instructions start with standard administration and scoring of the CAPS-5 are essential for producing ah. reliable and valid scores and diagnostic decisions. Interesting. See that language? I do. <laughs> you don't contend it's standard uh, not oh, to Oh, Lily, out thank you. Line. Serve them all muffins. Give everyone muffins. I think muffins. if you're filling it on on the right side of the box, I think that's perfectly fine. Oh, uh, she has her own so way to do it. Special. You think it's standard administration to, to simply leave blanks that are already in the Oof. I didn't leave blanks when I needed to find that's out answered. the frequency of the symptoms. All right, let's go down a little bit further. I think court of opinion is pivoted for Johnny. I don't know about Let's this yet. I want to hear the rest of the evidence. It says number two, read prompts verbatim one at a time. TMB and maybe. The order presented and then has a, has a variety of exceptions. It's fair to ask. With respect to the childhood trauma notations, Stardust, no, he generally doesn't watch the streams. Of the Caps 5. You he hears me talk about this all the time. read the prompts verbatim, did you? I read the first prompt. If there was a yes, then I would have made a decision. Thank Do you, I need to truth. administer a whole nother Caps? Appreciate right. it. And you ultimately didn't do that. You just simply wrote the margin of the last one. We'll because she wasn't lunch. endorsing those symptoms. Okay. She wasn't um, endorsing you, those symptoms. You talked about the endorsement language. of symptoms. Um. Ultimately, what you're looking for with respect to uh, PTSD is uh, functional deficiencies. That's one of the things you look for, right? Well, with any uh, DSM diagnosis, you're looking for what are the functional okay, impairments as a result of the symptoms that the individual is experiencing. Functional impairment. Okay. So, and in fact, if you go to the, all the way to the end of the form. Oh, the populist uh, perspective. That's a very fair point. The Thank you. Things that we deal with they stand to see Johnny impairment and occupational function right Thank you. correct right. I'm gonna try to make that a little bit bigger there we go it's gonna make it harder for me to read the super chats but what's Ms. Hurd's occupation we'll do our best she's an actor all right and she's in I like that she said actor. she had just wrapped a major motion picture correct that's correct 
So you didn't determine that she had an impairment. I would refresh your stream if it looks occupational blurry. Occupational function. She's still performing at literally the highest level of her profession. Correct. She had a number of PTSD symptoms while she was filming Aquaman too. Aquaman. Right. That interfered Aquaman. with her ability to really organize a lot of resources for herself like in order to panel. go forward and film that. I, I asked you whether production. she was performing at the highest level of her profession. Yes or no? I don't know if I'm qualified to answer that. Okay. Mm. Um, but did she report to you that, that she loves to cook? She loves to cook, yes. Yeah. Hike. Okay. I don't recall hiking, but... Read. Yep. Spend time with friends. If she can, that has been significantly diminished as a result of her PTSD symptoms as a result of this case. Her friends live with her. Uh, she just had a baby. She did. Right. Exercises every day. The, the most that I can tell, she does. Yeah. Uh, completed level three sommelier training. What? She did. She's a right. level she three sommelier? Things. Newsflash. Um, and you've made a determination that she is impaired with respect to her occupational functioning. I made a determination that the symptoms interfere with her functioning. She does these things, but it's not like the symptoms aren't there. She has to continue to work even though she has a panic attack, even though she has an intrusive recollection of the trauma, even though she's having heart palpitations and sweaty palms when something comes into her mind. It does not stop her from doing what she needs to do, but it does interfere. Okay. That's a fair answer. Um. So I'm, I'm going to ask you about another test that you administered. I like that they're sticking to the um, tests. And that's that was very helpful. PAI. Do you know that one? Yes, I do. Uh, it depends the, how close the they are, but generally not. Uh, assessment. Aquaman. Yep, just like that's Pokemon. <laughs> Got to catch them all. Why don't we mark? Uh, why don't we uh, put in front Thank of you the so much, Fox the Bain. PX 1244. All right. 1244. Aquaman is my least favorite Pokemon. Yes, I don't have one of those yet in my Pokedex. Oh, thank you. It's a Jeep thing. Thank you so much. All right. I know she's a level three sommelier. Like, how does she have time? When does she have time so, to be a level three sommelier? Like Dr. that's a Hughes, lot of work. Uh, recognize uh, PX 1244. Yes. And it's a list of critical item endorsements. Correct. What the fuck does that uh, mean? And that's derived from the PAI. Correct. Because um, the jury doesn't know. This is the PAI that you gave um, 926, 2019. I don't have the cover sheet in front of me. So uh, that will, she's like, so I'll take your word for it. The bottom time. Thank you. A sommelier is a wine expert. And, there it is. and the chat can explain level three. There's like, yep. I don't know how there many levels there. there are. Thank you. you there are numerous levels. I just don't okay. know what they are. Um, I forget my now, critical item. In, why don't, I'm going to move uh, this document, uh, PX 1244, into evidence. Your Honor, I would uh, request that the entire document be posted by the This explains, yes, exactly. I, this I'm only going to ask her about this piece. This, well, they don't have his, to put it in. His, Exhibit, do you have any objection to his exhibit, which is just the first page? You can admit the rest. All right, 1244 in evidence. Okay. So critical it item explain the love of the $500 bottles of wine. This starts a total of 27 PAI, PAI items reflecting serious pathology have been very low endorsement rates, have very low <laughs> endorsement rates in normal samples. These items have been termed critical items. You're, you're familiar with that concept? Yes, I am. All right. And I just want to ask you about a couple Aquaman of the does sound fancy. items. Uh, the first one is uh, potential for aggression. This was deemed, a, under your PAI, a critical item. It says, sometimes my temper explodes and I completely lose control. How did that uh, potential for aggression 
bear on your analysis. I like the way they're presenting the evidence. It makes it really easy well, to see. Well, there's a few things. Number one, certainly uh, Ms. Hurd reported to me that in her relationship, that would happen. Her anger and her affect regulation would become impaired. She's an expert um, in Number wine, two, you have to sure. look at the total scales where that scale is not elevated, so it would not be a major cause of clinical concern. Number three, she had four she responses that she could say to this question. Mainly true, very true, mainly true, sometimes true or false. She chose sometimes true. So she's answering honestly about her experience. Maybe. So sometimes, it's sometimes true that sometimes my temper explodes. That's Correct. what you're testifying. Correct. All right. So th you've talked a little bit about this concept we'll called malingering. And there's one here for potential malingering. And this is another one of these critical item endorsements. Critical items means that these are uh, serious pathology, right? Well, as you can see, it says endorsement of these critical items is not in and of itself diagnostic. No, as you, you can see, counsel, the content you can of read. The item, and that's how you make the determination. Is this something of clinical concern that you need to do more understanding about? Okay, so this critical item endorsement, this one reads under potential malingering, it will I be think interesting I have to see other experts. Completely different personalities talk about it. inside of me. Correct. And she endorsed that as sometimes true. Correct. Okay. And there's not one elevated malingering scale on the PAI. So there's no malingering scale on the PAI. Wait, is she playing with her glasses like she's bored? Uh, another document. Oh, we banged. Yay. There are four levels of sommelier, so level three is a lot of time and work. Also just found you already hooked. Thanks, Emma. Can the lawyers compare Amber Heard's answers to those tests to see what they're consistent? I mean, they would they would have Dr. Curry do that. They wouldn't do that. The lawyers aren't qualified as experts. Um, I swear I'm not trying to project this onto Amber Heard, but I feel like her muscles are trying to frown. I don't know. I, it might just be her resting 12 face. 48. 12 48. Right. Right, so, yes, sir. It, her the way she presents on the stand is very interesting for someone who teaches about being an expert. Yesterday, she kind of had her hand on her face, and these are all things that I bring up because the jury looks at them. The jury looks at all of this very closely. Um, Cynthia, right. I want Observe to cover all of this too. I very much like uh, his channel. Can, can you put up PX twelve forty eight just so for the, the coffee us. fund? Thank you so much. Dr. Hughes, do you recognize this? Yes. All right. And these are critical items that <laughs> were deduced uh, on the TSI 2 critical items list. Correct. And not until after Amber Heard's case is done. What does zero mean? None. Means that she scored a zero on that item. She said it's zero. not something zero. that's relevant zero. for her at the time None. frame that the test was administered. Um. <laughs> It'll be here for the replay crew, Mac. Right? Correct. Um, and so she scored a zero on doing something, something violent because violent what scales, because you were so upset. What's correct? See that controlled language? for that, though. You knew um, Ms. Heard to do violent things when she's upset. This test specifies how often have you had these symptoms in the last six months? Just in the last six months. Correct. All right. So she hadn't had them in the last six months. Correct. When was the test, test taken? Uh, also asks and inquires about intentionally hurting yourself or cutting. In the last six uh, months. Y'all, if problem. this is triggering for you, we will timestamp this later. You're Correct. welcome to come back. Had Miss Heard previously indicated to, your, to you that she cut herself? She indicated one time as a teenager in a reckless moment, she did. It was stupid, and I never did it again. Wait, wait. It's v very interesting the way she's almost right. apologizing for what Amber did. Like, it was a reckless moment. It was stupid, and I never did it again. She said that in the first person. That was so odd. Y'all, was that odd? That well, was odd to me. So that was the first time you met her. She indicated that she uh, had cut herself. That's odd. What did you do that to first person answer? yourself that she didn't continue weird. to engage in that behavior. That's As weird. with most things, As I asked about the weird. frequency of the behavior and had it ever occurred again. 
Had she ever engaged in suicidal behavior or suicidal gestures? That's part of that screen. Where did Ms. Hurd cut herself? I'd have to look at my notes to be sure. All right. Um, why don't we do that? That's in your intake note, correct? Um, let's, let's I don't recall. Right, and they're asking PX her to refresh her recollection. I don't think they're going to ask that. I don't doubt this is uncomfortable and, for everyone uh, in the courtroom. If you put though. it up for the witness. That's not it. Let's go to the next page. That's what I'm hearing. When it was about Johnny Depp, they said um, these were supposed to be reports of the last year, and she All said right. she was oriented to a different yeah, time period. We're on the third, we're on the third page. Um, Coaching is an interesting phrase, but we'll talk about it at the break. Uh, about the prep has uh, already been it already been admitted into evidence. Um, Are we focusing on the candy? I want to see the expert. We know there's candy. There's a discussion here uh, we talked about earlier uh, about intimate relationships. Did he switch topics? I'm, I'm sorry, the question? Yeah, let's go back to the first page. This is a very good cross. It's not fiery and explosive, but they are going point by right, point there. by point, picking apart um, her testimony. Um, it's not always smooth. I mean, it's definitely not scripted like TV, but it's not ex explosive. So I, There's definitely been some anyway, good points I'll made. It be, um, I, like a, I like a methodical cross. We're going to do it again. What, what you said, 1246? <laughs> 1246. All right. Okay. It, it, it's in evidence. I, there's supposed to be redactions, so, though. But, okay. She remembers right. a lot about Amber Heard. I don't right. know how she didn't um, remember that. So, why don't we uh, blow up the intimate relationships? It seems so that way, Katie. Uh, or making excuses, at there's least. There's intimate relationships here uh, relative to. A variety of people, um, including a, a person called Tasha. Huh. Tasha. Tasha. Ah, uh, uh, who's your partner? Um, she was Miss Heard's wife. Okay. I don't think that's and true. That, e. that relationship uh, preceded her relationship with Mr. Depp. That's correct. She does feel defensive. She feels Did protective. You say on direct which is odd for that you a saw no previous interpartner violence. Expert. Just Ooh. yes or no. I don't believe I did. You don't believe that you saw interpartner violence, or you she didn't say it on direct. I don't believe I said that yesterday. Okay, that's where they're going. No previous IPV. There's got to be. There's got to be some rulings here. Um, they've got to get into this. I imagine that what they're approaching about, and this is my, uh, just my speculation from being a trial attorney. I imagine that they're saying they've opened the door now to get into the ex-partner to talk about whether that would have changed her opinion, to talk about whether she was presented that information or she picked and was picking and choosing because there's going to be some rulings in court about not getting into Amber Heard's prior arrest for domestic violence with her ex-wife. But those those doors can be opened, if you will, and that's what it's called in court, opening the door to allow an expert to rely on that. Because if the expert ignored, um, interesting, sorry, squirrel, the PR agent is sitting next to um, Chanley from Court TV again today, which is interesting to note because um, I saw a lot of that yesterday. But the um, if she didn't consider this past arrest, if she didn't consider that there had been previous incidents of intimate partner violence where Amber Heard was the perpetrator, it goes to her credibility and it goes to what she's basing her expert testimony on. I think that's what they're arguing about now. I think that's why he asked, do you know who this is? Did you testify that you had ever seen that? That if she had never seen that, why? If Amber Heard had never reported that to her why? If Amber Heard had left information out, does that change her assessment? This goes to evaluating her expert opinion, and it should come in. So I, it looks like she's blocking his face. I'm sure that's just the angle. But this is a this is an important part of what was considered, and their expert opened the door for it. I think it should come in. There might be limiting instructions on how it can come in. But again, fair is fair. They asked experts, well, did you know Johnny Depp was sued for 
by somebody who says he punched him, it's just as fair to say, did you know that Amber Heard was arrested for domestic violence in an intimate partner relationship with her ex-wife? It's fair. I don't know if it's the lighting or makeup, but Amber seems um, to have some suspicious marks near her eyes. I, I don't know. I think she just looks tired, um, as anybody would be in court with that overhead lighting. MD here, no reliable psych interview would, I love you guys bringing all your expertise in here, um, would be so biased. It's over the top and puts Amber Heard on a pedestal. I don't believe it. And I think Dr. Curry has got to be sitting in court fuming. I should be writing my romance book, but this whole case has made me totally hooked and distracted. Um, well, when you do write your romance book, will you please tag me and let me know when it's out? We we love some spicy novels. Dr. Hughes is Amber Heard from the future. <laughs> Maybe she might be Amber Heard from the future coming back to testify. I just joined and say it really is your commentary. Thank you. I am now too spoiled to watch court without you. I mean, I will be here to do it. This is going to be interesting. Let's see what happens. You're welcome for the insight. Um, they have to prove that she lied to the jury. And we'll, I talk about that in my roundup. I've got a breakdown of this case that will help explain that more than I have time for at this moment. Let's see what this next question is. I'm riveted. Ask about the partner. Ask about the prior DV arrest. Did you speak with Ms. Heard around the circumstances that gave rise to the um, TRO? Hmm. With, they moved um, out of that on area. On May 21st? Yes. Thank you. Um, yes, I did. Okay. Interesting. Did Ms. Heard ever tell you that James Franco spent the night with her? at the ECB between May 21 and May 27? I recall, I mean, again, it would be helpful to have my notes so I can tell you exactly what, but I do recall that she did see him at some point. I do not know if he spent the night. Do you know if Elon Musk spent the night during that period? I don't know. I'm interested as to where this is going. And I wonder if they, if the judge said, no, that's not coming in because they're not asking about it. And this would be the time when they would ask about it. Oh, if, if the judge was going to allow the candy, she would allow it or not. If it was not okay with the judge, the bailiffs would have yeeted the candy off the desk immediately. Um, bring back Dr. Curry, more muffins. I think that'll come back in rebuttal after the close of Amber Heard's case. You cannot testify that Johnny Depp was not abused, can you? That's a double negative, and that's annoying. I, I can testify that he had physical acts of violence perpetrated on him as well as psychological aggressive acts perpetrated upon him. No further questions. All right. Read your okay. Answer. They're not getting into the past partner arrest. That's very interesting. Very interesting. Let's see what happens on redirect. Now, this is Amber Heard's attorney, who I call Umbridge, based on her style Dr. and tone. Hughes, She's very happy that that didn't come in, it seems. Presentations. I think plaintiff's 1241 was the first one. If we can bring that up. Tom, could you help me out with that? 1241? Well, I was normally asking the questions in court, Linda, so I didn't have to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> And when I wasn't asking the questions, I was listening because I was the one, um, yes. I was the one having to object and, and stuff. So if you can scroll down, I generally didn't have to sit there what quietly. What was, was the significance doing of the this presentation? And and can you can you give her control, or do you have to have control? <laughs> can I'm you give her control, control, or do you have to have control? I must have control, so Elaine. The entire presentation. Okay. I find can it crazy that she can directly quote Amber Heard, but needs her notes for everything else. Yep. And the jury might see um, that too. To the best of my recollection, it was what I spoke to you about before of how people who are not trained in forensic psychology, but who are working with victims of domestic violence can go into court and navigate with the court system and present and talk about domestic violence in a, a legal setting. Okay. 
Thank you. And that's been moved into admission. That's been moved that's in, it. correct? Yes. Okay, well, let's go to the they're ones not there I don't yet. think was. 1242. With the Botox please. and stuff. They're not. I don't know if you could bring that up. They're not at a point where they would ask. So. All right. And is that just one page, too? How many pages is that one? Okay. Um, Cheyenne, yes, they can bring up Amber Heard's ex when she's on the stand. Dr. And Dr. it might have to yes, wait till then. Okay. Um, could you please just, well, let's, I'm going to move the admission of plaintiff's exhibit 1242, first of all. Any objection? All right, 1242. Okay. And um, could we publish it to the jury, please? Yeah. And Dr. Hughes, could you please tell the jury, explain to the jury what this presentation entails? Okay. Um, so I was asked by the head of the Kings County Bar Association to give a presentation oh, about yes. uh, intimate partner violence, domestic violence, and how psychological experts can be of assistance. Um, this was um, just because of how Brooklyn is a, a bar association that was attended by many of the prosecutors from the Kings County uh, District Attorney's Office, as well as defense attorneys. And as I stated before, this presentation was about how to really understand cases of domestic violence, how to understand what if she drops the restraining order? What if she doesn't call the police? What are the myths and misconceptions about intimate partner violence? She switched back to looking um, at the jury and, and talking when about she, she uses force. Which is what does that mean? How do we understand that? How do we evaluate for that? Um, so again, without seeing the rest of the presentation, I believe that was the thrust of this presentation. Okay, great. Thank you. Now, uh, you testified you guys keep about saying Bailey is Bailey the Sarian notes in the you chat. took and she the notes hello, you Bailey. reviewed, um, and you were asked about some limited questions it's hard to see on the chat. It's very busy today. <laughs> I'm going to ask for Defendant's Exhibit 1434. The jury determines bias, and the jury determines how much weight to give anyone's particular testimony. So no. The jury gets to decide. That's why it's a battle of the experts. The jury has to pick. They get to assign the weight. They get to assign the credibility. No, oh, no, no, no. Okay. Oh, I need, we need, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Sammy. That's what cross examination's for, to evaluate the truthfulness. But you were doing a fine job, Tom. I didn't mean to take it away from you. <laughs> Stop, oh, thank stop you, it. Uh, stop Dr. trying Jesus, to be cheeky. It's just annoying after how much yes, you've right, for the, the last admission three weeks. Of, of Defendants 1434. You're out of completeness. They've got all the other records in here for Dr. Hughes. I'm trying to see completeness. I just, I'll sustain the objection. Okay. Next question. Let's go to uh, Defendants 1435, please. Um, did anything interesting, Leah? I don't know if it's and interesting, Hughes, but important you, you stuff came out about of it. The different, we'll talk uh, about that uh, later today testings that you administered and this is one of the ones that i believe you testified to earlier correct that's correct and this is the dsm-5 um this is the clinician administered ptsd scale for the dsm-5 okay um i'm going to move the admission of 1435. hello bailey what's the objection It's not the caps. It's the DSM five. We'll sorry, my chat just froze, y'all. So if but I missed something, I'm sorry. But she administered all these tests, Your Honor, and they can't, for completeness. Well, of well, record, well, why they aren't you approaching? Aye, aye, aye. I have the rest of it. Um, I think well, they, I mean, why aren't you approaching? There's no objection to when they put theirs in. Now, I would now say, they're objecting to you putting. I, I, I would say rule of completeteness, Your Honor. Rule two, Virginia Rule two colon one o six. No, you. Um, that's not how that works, though. Put a partial in and then not. Not have the complete yes, the testing. In the you can. So you, That's why things get redacted. The, you their test in. Now you want to put more tests in. Correct? It's different. Correct. But th that's not a completeness. Yeah, that's not then. completeness. It's a different test. Well, it's all, it's also, but what's the objection though? That there's. Okay. All right. I'll sustain the objection. It's uh, not completeness we'll if it's a different test. Ones, um, I'm going to make a note for rule of completeness. TSI, We're going to have to talk about it. What well, before we go on to the others? Let's talk about. Could you please? Tell the jury what you administered in this DSM-5 and why this is significant. <laughs> They're not going to let her get into anything on this. Can you tell us why the DSM-5 <laughs> is redirect. significant that you administered? Ooh, so the, the DSM-5 is the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual 
for psychiatric disorders. Oh it's published by the American Psychiatric Association. That's where it has all the criteria and all the information for our major mental disorders like major depressive disorder or panic disorder or PTSD. What the CAPS is, the Clinician Administered PTSD Scale, is it follows all of that criteria that's in the DSM-5 so that you can make a very accurate diagnosis. Y'all in the chat are going to make me start singing Bailey Sarian's theme song. I'm going to shana shana in here in just a second. So not only on this, I mean, this instrument can stand alone where she meets PTSD criteria just by virtue of this instrument, pardon me, but also the the other testing that I gave where she had elevated scales on PTSD measures, which correspond with the DSM-5 symptoms of PTSD. She's trying to explain. So there are multiple measures that are consistent across time that she meets criteria for She's PTSD. trying to fix why she didn't fill out the Thank CAPS-5 you, Now, you were also thoroughly. given That's one what she's page trying to fix. of the scoring on the TSI-2 uh, and one page with respect to the Possibly. PAI. Do you recall seeing that? Uh, it wasn't the scoring. They were the critical items on those respective tests. Okay. Well, I'm going to ask to bring up Defendant's Exhibit 1858. Okay. Bring it up. So rule of completeness, real quick. Rule of completeness means if Which you enter in part of a document, but it's not the complete PAI, story or the complete conversation, um, you need to enter in the rest. Is this the actual testing and scoring? But when they're talking about two different tests, um, yes, this is the, the completing profile, the one. Um, the scores that are generated from the 344 questions that Ms. Heard uh, answered on this test. And, and what did you, what were the results? What, what did you determine based on the testing of this PAI? Well, that the results were valid and reportable. Um, there was no evidence of exaggeration or malingering oh. on this test. And there were significant symptoms you know um, were that valid correspond and with traumatic stress and post-traumatic stress disorder symptomatology. And I believe you said again that there was um, that there was no elevated scores. Can you explain to the jury what you meant by that? Objection leading. It's oh, fair. Overruled up. Okay. So elevated She's an scores expert. are You're allowed to a, a lead a little bit differently with an expert. Know where a cutoff is to say the that judge something is, also like, is can clinically we just, significant, can we and just, that follows very um, standard statistical principles. So the judge when a wants scale to get is elevated, too, I it suspect. means that we have sort of greater confidence Sorry, that guys. this individual endorsed a lot of different symptoms that make this scale relevant, and that we want to figure out why. Um, that person is having an elevated score on something like depression or Same, anxiety. Julie. Um, it gives us greater confidence that, you know, this person's maybe reporting depressive symptoms like people who are depressed. Okay. And what, yes, what would is, constitute it's standard. an elevated score? It's standard with Well, on different tests, it's different things. Um, certainly on the PAI, um, it, it doesn't follow linear T-scores, it's a little earlier. different statistically, so you have to look at it differently. Um, but certainly, uh, you know, it's usually about a T-score of a 65, and on some it's a T-score of a 70, which is a, a T-score is a normative curve, is a way of allowing us to compare people's Much scores, than yesterday. comparing your scores to the normative group of scores. Okay. And would it be at all helpful to have the entire uh, test as opposed to a, I think it goes to impeachment, not perjury here. I don't think. Well, certainly we're you about cannot tell this. the entirety of how um, the symptoms that Ms. Heard endorsed and the scales were elevated just by the critical items. All right, I'm going to move the admission of plaintiff's ex or defendant's exhibit 1858. Objection here, sir. And this is the completeness, Your Honor. I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Right. Let's bring up 1859. The judge already explained why it's not completeness. It's a different test. It's not a complete record of the same record. That's why. So completeness means, again, completing the full record. If it's an email chain, you can't just admit one. You need all of them. But these are two and different this is, tests. You were shown one page from the TSI-2, the Trauma Symptom Inventory 2. Do you recall that? Correct. Okay. What is the significance of the TSI-2 exam, the full exam? The trauma symptom inventory is a test of common symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder and related traumatic symptomatology. And um, on this score, she had, you know, elevations in intrusive experiences, which is the um, intrusive component of PTSD, where <laughs> thoughts or memories or feelings come into your mind when you don't want them with accompanying distress 
and then the defensive avoidance doing many, many different things to push it down, to try not to think about it, to try not to talk about it um, so that you don't get upset. Um, and she also scored high on a scale of relational avoidance, having difficulty feeling close in relations and uh, relationships, not only intimate relationships, but friendships as well. And um, that's a related trauma symptom that individuals have after having sustained um, an interpersonal trauma like domestic violence. Interesting that she went with. And like, would it be helpful? Minimal, minimal makeup to today. have the full exam as opposed to one page out of it. <laughs> As with anything, seeing an entire uh, <laughs> profile gives one more information. Your Honor, I'd move the admission of Defendant's Exhibit 15. No, it's not going to come in. Objection. It's not going to come in. And if, I would argue the complete rule again. For this. The judge has ruled three times now on completeness, and Elaine Bredhoff keeps trying to end route around the judge's ruling. This is not what completeness is Four, they entered the first sheet to show that she did the test and the date that the test was done. You don't need completeness for that. And they're trying to get in a bunch of hearsay that's on these documents. Yes, hearsay documents. And that is why they're fighting. But this is not what completeness, again, is for because they don't need the entire test because it's not out of context. The first page goes to date. So it'll be interesting to see what the judge here does she's ruled it three times and we're getting Bredhoff arguing again no your honor now now there's a foundation for it now there's this now there's this but she's not going to be able to end route this judge to get that in so let's see what happens <clears throat> now, Dr. Hughes, and thank you, you chat for adhering to the chat rules we don't name call in you here shown a couple we have a very pleasant finger chat pictures don't show the finger pictures um, Without warning, at least warn us, Elaine. Mr. Depp. She was shown those. Oh, they're probably going to show Herd's pictures, and which I is fair. You indicated those were shown to you, and I think you were asked uh, if you were uh, if these were severe injuries. Correct. Correct. All right. Did you have any understanding of the cause of those injuries by Mr. Depp? I do understand that there's competing accounts of what happened for sure. All right. Let's bring up defendants exhibits 373. That's exactly what they want their expert to say. I understand there's competing accounts. And that's why they had Dr. Curry, Amanda, as their PTSD expert. Right. That's why they brought in a PTSD expert, admitted. not an IPV expert. That's why they brought in Dr. Curry. I see it. Because and it brings. Jamie doesn't have it. So 373. Dr. I Curry gave it, the jury context I think for how to view this testimony. If well, I may, and they are I hoping. No, yeah. I can just tell you that 373 has not been. In the oh my God, Elaine, stop arguing over the judge. FFS. Your Honor, it's not redacted. Yeah. And I don't okay. believe it's been admitted. It, it, the, the part I'm trying to admit is in another exhibit. So let's, let's go in a different way. We'll take that one down. Let's go with 398. Go find the other exhibit then. You have a fleet of lawyers. Redacted is an evidence. That's, that might be the one. Thank you, Your Honor, for keeping us moving along. We, will, But they're putting in this expert now to try to give, again, context for Amber Heard's right. testimony. You hear this expert say okay. these facts as if they're facts, which Maybe she shouldn't have done. We'll talk about it later. But then you hear Amber Heard say the same thing. It gives the impression to the jury that these are now consistent statements from Amber Heard, which is why they placed this witness who I'm not loving as an expert, but why they placed her first because it makes Amber Heard option. seem more credible when she testifies because now the jury is like, oh, we heard that before. There oh, we, we heard that before. You can blow that one up. She spits out Depp as if it's a cursey word. This is an email from Mr. Depp to David Kipper. His, Your understanding was that was his doctor, correct? Correct. I'm going to say if somebody's going to okay. cry on the stand, I want and them looking I'm like Lauren Conrad with mascara rolling down an eye. That's the what last I'm looking for. part of this, this is on 319, 2015. The camera's Thank not going to show the jury. Everything. It's for security and yeah, privacy. Good. So the jury I'm should never be shown. They didn't show jury selection either. Thank That's you why. for everything. I've chopped off my left middle finger as a reminder that I should. Thank you, Your Honor, that I should never cut off my finger again. Do you see that? They keep yes, trying to make these facetious okay, so tests Mr. seem Depp real. admitting that to Dr. Kipper in 319, 2015. Objection it, leading. Yeah, it's saying. Okay. That is leading. Okay. That's, that's proper that's objection. I, I'm good with that. Um, I'm good with that. Go Thanks for your running commentary, Elaine. Stop trying to steal my gig. 
Elaine's coming for my job. Um, yeah, yes, this is studying for evidence. Um, they might have kept previous arrest out of four or three concerns, which is and why they might I not get to it one is in as until well, she testifies. Is it, is it You're absolutely right. Yes, that's okay. One. Thank you. Completeness goes more to giving accurate context instead of like uh, one thing out I of context. Not necessarily it, everything has to come in of one document. That helps. The context to matters. Erin Falati, we talked about her earlier. On 10 we did talk about her earlier. Thank you. And it says, this is the second time he's held off giving me my meds by blackmailing me into seeing him. The first time I had just chopped my finger off. Do you recall seeing that as part of the documents that you reviewed? Mm, I believe I did. Okay, thank you. We can take that down. She did talk about the broken bottle yesterday. She sure did. Now, you were also asked to listen to an audio ah. tape. Prayer of the court, not actual prayer. And Fair enough. Plaintiff's 343. I'm going to, and, and, and you recall here listening to that audio tape at some point as part of your review? Uh, yes, I do. Okay, I'm going to now That's a fair pull up that same insight, audio tape Blooming Lotus, thank you. from the same day, and I believe that's June 2016. And if we could go to, and we're going to have a few different ones, so, so hold in there with us. We're going to start with two... Minutes 40 seconds, zero, zero, going to two minutes, 40 seconds, and 21. Oh, we are live. All live. Super live. Live, live, live. This is how long court takes. These pauses are very normal, and this is all pretty standard for court. I'm knocking on the door. I don't because get I like that they're playing audio. National and violent fucking maneuver. How so a man would want to get it? out of that area so that he doesn't get so fucking angry. I think she'll testify today. Pop the fucking wife. That's one in front of me. Oh, man. Go home and listen to the tape. Now, that was just before the punching, hitting um, that was played. Do you recall? How that? do you know that? Objection. Objection. Leaving. Yes. Well, the, the uh, tape recording that you listened to was at 2 colon 4601 to 247, 2 colon 4720, and that was 2 colon 40 through 2 colon 4021. That's right? not the way you phrased the question. Objection yeah. leading. Okay. Now let's go no. to after. The rule. Uh, uh, let the judge rule. Now let's go to after that, 2 colon 52, zero, zero, to 2 colon 5234. yesterday and this is completeness of the audio this is fair it's been lately like since australia and i have been on the road with you i haven't been working i don't know what else i could fucking do since australia you've been on a honeymoon you had a great time while living in the back you had a fight on the train yeah physical yeah now we have to fight in san francisco I thought everything else was great. No. And then let's go to three colon twenty zero zero to question. three colon twenty one thirty seven. Is there a question? Since San Francisco, everything's been great. Okay. I Mother, like the use of audio that, with this expert. I'll just though. ask you the question, Doctor Hughes. Oh, do good you question. Call that Mr. Depp said that they had fights leading. in the places that he listed on that audio tape. Objection leading. Sustained. All right. <laughs> what do you recall Mr. Depp saying about fights that they'd had on that audio tape? Um, Objection, I've, no foundation. She just listened to it. <laughs> Overruled. Okay. Yeah. I've, um, I think it was hard to hear in this one. I had listened to it previously, um, just acknowledging that there are fights previously. Okay. Thank you. Crime scene, 
You know. We don't get our shit together. And that, by getting our shit together, that might mean fucking hey, we do this, we make it. That might mean well, damn. You know. So he, I, I've tried done to lose. We've got to get our shit together as individuals and as a couple. Because I love you. And I do not want to leave you. I don't want to divorce and I don't want to get out of my life. I just want peace. And if I'm the culprit, the majority of the time, I will fucking do everything I can. And I will recognize when I'm fucking starting to go sideways. I will recognize. Do you recall listening to that part of the tape, the audio I, tape? Yes, I do. And, and what do you recall from that portion? Again, I know it's hard to hear, but it's hard to hear. But um, hear. what I recall from hearing that was the, the the negotiation that the couple is trying to do and and trying to say, you know, I'm I'm going to do my part. I'm going to do better. Okay. Is it possible to turn that up anymore, or is it, I have one more? I'm just. Yeah, the audio today has been pretty terrible. Thank you, Jamie. Okay, my last one is three colon twenty six twenty. To three colon twenty nine fifty. Your Honor, can we approach? Okay, yes, sir. Yeah the the audio has been better on other court days. Today it was really really rough. Um, you guys, we are at over fifty two thousand in the chat. Thank you so much. The Lonards chat is a really special place because we do have a few chat rules, um, and our mods are reminding of that. So please just be mindful that we uh, we don't name call, we don't disparage, we don't besmirch. We have conversations about what we're seeing in court. We can talk about actions and things that are said without talking about people mm -hmm. commenting on looks, things like that. So I appreciate you all <laughs> adhering to my rules. Different in the moment when you're mad and you go fuck it you just decide all bets are off well, look what I did on Australia look what I accomplished I put the fucker away I told myself every fucking day no he's gone no he's not fucking put him away put him away and by a list Things that I feel that fuck you over or make you feel shitty or anything like that. I fucking, when we're in the moment, I remember it. I remember what I put on my list. I remember it. And I try to, 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 to bring it down notches, many notches. I'll try to be good if we're heightened. Say, I don't want you to feel this. I don't want. I don't want to feel this. Let's. I know. I need to know what we need to do different. I need to know. It's got to be done with your mind and your heart. What do we do different? If well, I have a problem, you no. need to tell me how to tell you different. If I'm hurting you, you need to let me be able to be mad. Sometimes you're gonna make me mad. I'm a human. I cannot live where it's like. Well, then it's the same thing goes for me. Then you're gonna have to allow me to get mad. Yes, exactly. If okay, I do something that makes you mad, you start fucking yelling. I, 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 I don't have to start yelling. I think I start yelling once it gets fucking heightened. I've gotten a lot better about that. It's just only no, I only start no. yelling when it's fucking hour eleven and we're really in it. Hour 11? I'm starting about the yelling. You witnessed it. You're the one that brought it up. Australia was fucking great. You just argued. Let's go back there. Let's go back there in our fucking heads and our hearts. Let's go back there. No, on your list. Is the monster gone? Did you put him away? 
it's been so when you get on that train you get angry you stay on it for so long and you won't come down you won't talk to the person that's that not, is you that's this is new audio doesn't have to always be the monster but what is it can you put that away can you remember the bigger picture? You don't want to spend your life. I've asked you this so many times in fights. You want to spend your time like this. No, you don't. But I ask you because this is something you're choosing. I'm saying to you, olive branch. And you don't take my olive branches. You made me feel humiliated for offering them. You asked me to stay in Australia. I stayed. And then you walk out on me all the time. You've got to take some olive branches from me. You've got to offer them too. You've got to be bigger than what you feel at that moment. And so do I. So do I. But if I call you on it, will you hear it? You call me out on it if I'm doing it. Okay. And? Do you remember listening to that, Dr. Hughes? Yes, I do. And, and what is your interpretation of that? What do you recall? Objection, Your Honor. Speculation. Yeah, why does her opinion matter? Overruled. But is she giving? I, I think this opinion? is more of the, how this couple is trying to negotiate in the face of all of the um, the turmoil and the violence and the abuse. Um, I think it's important pointing out is my recollection is that there's two Australias. They're talking about the honeymoon Australia, not the honey, not the Australia where the incident happens. They go back, and that becomes a honeymoon time for them. Um, and I think certainly hearing how this couple has talked about the monster and, and the person who comes out, it was, we talked about that cycle of violence where the person who, you know, hurts Just her remember, and, we're not and here controls to her isn't the same person that she, she loves and she cares about and that she wants to be with. Thank you, Dr. Hughes. Now, are we done? We, they, you it. also were asked about Dr. Bonnie Jacobs and her treatment and her tre it's treatment notes. Clear that notes. she's the recording party uh, in those. Her you, voice is much did louder. Did you review those treatment notes from Bonnie Jacobs? Yes, I did. I'm going to ask you to turn to, can we bring up defendants 1059? So are these Bonnie Jacobs notes, I'm assuming? I don't know if we've seen this yet. Yes, Leanne, there are some. They keep trying to make some of those hyperbolic texts seem... And like they're do you literal? recognize these this document? I've been calling it yes. trying to make fetch happen because that's the best and analogy I've got. Um, this looks like the first of Dr. Bonnie Jacobs' uh, treatment notes, starting in October seventeenth, two thousand eleven. Okay, and do you recall whether Ms. Hurd was already in a relationship with Mr. Depp at that time? Um, yes, she was. Okay, and you testified quite extensively yesterday about. Bonnie Jacobs notes and, and entries there. Uh, were those reflected in these notes? These were the notes Objection that I was leading, Your Honor. I can ask it differently. And maybe don't leave. What if any uh, of those uh, citations that you gave to the jury were in these notes? Objection compound. Uh, overruled. Yeah, that's a fair question. Um, these were the notes that I was referring to okay. yesterday. A and what was the significance of these notes to you? You were asked again about them on cross. I don't know if these are going to come in. Again, I found the, the treatment notes very significant because they had contemporaneous reports of what Ms. Hurd was going through, not only what she was reporting in her relationship with Mr. Depp, but her accompanying symptomatology. Um, what the notes revealed was there's a significant amount. Well, we see it unfold in time. We see where the violence starts and we see how it unfolds. We see at least three indications of, of sexual assault. We see constant um, pleadings and, and, and upset about his substance abuse and trying to find ways to get him help. And she joins Al-Anon to get herself help as a family member of someone who struggles with substance abuse. We see how she's reporting a lot of controlling behavior and obsessive behavior. Um, we see that there's two instances where the police were going to be called and when in her apartment in Orange um, because of the fighting um, at that time, once they actually were called and once they weren't from what I can amass from the notes. So what it does is it really shows how this relationship is unfolding over twice. time and actually getting worse. And then you indicated that Amber Heard moved from Bonnie Jacobs to uh, Dr. Cohen and that was in 2014, is that correct? Correct. Okay. And 
what is your understanding of the relationship between Dr. Cowan and Dr. Kipper? Um, they were professional colleagues and they were friends and um, Dr. I mean, well, it's, it's understanding why Ms. Hurd left the relationship with Bonnie Jacobs. Huh. It was, it became a tumultuous relationship for her there because she was doing her a lot therapist? to um, protect Johnny and Bonnie Jacobs had concerns. Objection, Your Honor. What's the objection? That's no all foundation. speculative and no foundation. I, I established the foundation. She she reviewed the notes and she interviewed Bonnie Jacobs. But Jane. she's going as a oh, state oh, of mind. Foundation objection. Yeah, Go ahead. bring it different. Objection non responsive. State of mind. State of mind. <laughs> Speculation. Rule non responsive. But please continue, Dr. Hughes. Um, the reason that. So um, speculative. Miss Heard left her treatment with Bonnie Jacobs. Well, one that Mr. Depp continued to denigrate that relationship or therapeutic therapeutic oh, relationship. It's but number fault. two, really more importantly, is that she wanted to protect Mr. Depp because she didn't want Miss Dr. Jacobs had some concerns about perhaps his substance using in front of his children, and that she would be a mandated huh. reporter. Um, so Miss Heard did not want to do anything and talk more about what was going on with Mr. Um, about Mr. Depp with her therapist for fear that Interesting. Um, something might happen. So she left that treatment really to protect uh, Mr. Depp. Yeah, I'd like to move the admission of uh, the defendant's notes? exhibit 10. No, that's all hearsay. The treatment notes. Objection no. to hearsay, Your Honor. This is what we dealt with yesterday. Your Honor, I, I think that the, for completeness here, no, he's, he's that's not how that works. And they reflect the present sense impressions. No, the objection to hearsay. All right, let's go to defendants exhibit 1057, please. Yep, that's not how that works. They're not getting, they want the jury to be able to read all these treatment notes that have Amber Heard's side and in them, but that's not Dr. what's going to happen. You also indicated that you relied on the treatment notes of Dr. Uh, Conan, correct? Cohen, Con Connell Cohen. Cohen, yes. That's it. Okay, and and you also interviewed him as well. Correct. Okay, and and on what what was the significance of what he reported to you that related to your opinions? Well, this was a continuation of her treatment and the treatment here where it seemed like Dr. Connell Cohen was going was a harm reduction model, really trying to um, help Amber stay safe in the relationship by not talking back, by leaving, by not engaging. Um, and those are very sort of short-term strategies when you're in uh, a relationship mired with interpersonal violence. Um, what we also see is what I mentioned yesterday is um, I mean, her psychological status and functioning <clears throat> continues to deteriorate. She continues to have more anxiety, more affect dysregulation, sort of feelings are coming up and down all the time. Um, she's having more sleep problems. She's going on more medication. Um, and the sort of the conceptualization and understanding of that is, you know, sort of exposure to repeated trauma causes psychological disequilibrium and destabilization. Um, and that's we're sort of, again, seeing the trauma unfold over time. And also in these notes, I mean, certainly there are those contemporaneous reports um, that correspond to specific incidents. Like I was speaking with you yesterday about the Boston plane incident. There are actual notes where she called him after objection, your she honor. called yes. him. What's the objection? Beyond the scope of the question. Yes, it is beyond the scope. Right. Non-responsive. Uh, the objection. Next question. Okay. This is a very uh, fair point, Philip. What if she's any, triggered by alcohol uh, and becomes a level three small Did you get from Dr. Cowan that assisted you in your opinions? This is, I think, beyond the scope um, of cross well, certainly as well, from the but... notes, as I was stating, that, you know, there were times where right after an incident, you know, Ms. Heard wrote, um, she contacted Dr. Cohen either by text or by email and saying, you know, Johnny did a number on me tonight. I really need to see you. Um, I'm safe. I'm Objection hurt, I'm hearsay. Safe. I think she can rely on hearsay. Sustain the objection. She can rely hearsay. on hearsay for forming her opinion, but not for relaying it as if it's Your what Honor, happened. I'm, I'm going to uh, move. Nope. The admission Negative. of uh, the notes. Uh, defendants Negative ghost writer. Keep trying to make fetch happen, but that's not hearsay, happen. Those right. are all hearsay. The yeah, the judge is like, the you're not even trying this right now. Strike the hearsay testimony as well. Agreed. No, we'll continue on. That. Yeah, Go ahead. that's not going to happen. Though. Um, She's an expert. You were asked Those notes about don't come in. a knife. You were shown plaintiff's exhibit 92 and a knife that's. I thought that was very good cross. Death. What is your understanding of the significance of that knife and that phrase as it related oh, to Amber? Oh, that's absolutely okay. irrelevant, her Objection. speculation. No foundation. 
It's for speculation. He showed it in cross examination. I'm I'm able to ask about it and what her understanding. Yeah, but not in that way. She was trying to talk. I'm just letting her go back in. I'm just letting her go back in. No, her understanding of a knife is not relevant. Let's pull up plaintiff's ninety two. Tom, can I get you to do that, please? Oh, now she's asking their tech expert to pull it up. Great, Tom, be a love. Will you pull up the giant fucking knife that Amber Heard gave to Johnny Depp? I'd love to hear her opinion as to why someone who was in an in opposite position. In response to the questions asked by counsel for Mr. Depp, power who said it depends this. upon what the context is. What did you mean by that? That's a better question. Well, if first I believe that this is the knife that has a turquoise end. Um, and I think this, this knife was when a time when uh, Mr. Depp was filming The Lone Ranger and he was in a, a turquoise phase. Um, and she purchased him that because she thought it would be um, a full a picture kind of the knife on my Twitter. I want to um, go see it. The phraseology is that Mr. Depp told her the only way out of this relationship is death. Okay. Section what, hearsay. Well, that's a, a, that's an omission by a party opponent. It's not really I, I hearsay. I don't understand the objection. I don't either. She's, she was entitled to be able to speak to that. But the objection but she, was to the question, not to the answer. Yeah, it's Mr. Depp's statement. Yeah, it's party, party opponent. Was the objection. Thank you. Okay. Um, I agree with Elaine on that one. And what is your uh, opinion? How, it's what, a light what turquoise on the knife. As a, a clinical psychologist in specializing yes. in IPV and trauma. That's speculation. I mean, objection, Your Honor. Can I? Uh, can we? Okay. Approach? Can we approach? It's interesting that they're trying to get to some expert opinion of why the knife was given, but it's it's not being done very well by Elaine. And that's why there's these odd objections. It's like, you can't really get into it unless she formed an expert opinion. They're trying to get in Amber's thought process of why she gave the knife, but the question should be, and it's a proper question for an expert in interpersonal violence. Why would a, you know, why would a victim of interpersonal violence that's in a relationship where the power is unequal, give someone a knife? That is a question based on in her expert opinion, because she is an expert, but the question's not being asked well. Dr. And Hughes, she just indicated something to Amber Heard. The phraseology on the knife. Which was interesting. Uh, there's any relationship or significance. No, no cross examination again. This is it. In this case. Objection, Your Honor. Leading. Sustained objection. She's an what, expert. You're allowed to lead. Does the phraseology on the knife uh, have in to the opinions you have provided in this case? That's a fair Objection, question. Your Honor, beyond the scope of the that is, disclosure. That's a, beyond the scope that, of cross. You it up cross your with objection. Thank you. Um, so there are several things. I, I certainly am aware that at this time that um, Ms. Heard purchased this knife for um, Mr. Depp. Redirect. She was um, of the expert. engaged in a, her whole lot of denial and minimization the about the extent of the violence in the relationship. Um, there is a notation in, in Dr. Bonnie Jacobs' notes about um, when Mr. Depp uttered this to her um, was under the, around the discussions of the prenup. And he said, I don't want one because the only way out of this relationship is death. Um, Dr. Jacobs didn't think that that was funny. Miss Heard was taking it like, oh, maybe it's endearing. Maybe this is okay. Um, but it was definitely a, a clinical cause of concern um, at the time um, that that phraseology was used. Thank you, Dr. Hughes. Now you were you listened to an audio a clinical tape cause of concern. Most marital vows that. have till death do us uh, part in them, which is interesting. I took it as a threat from her as part of your examination. They're taking it as a objection beyond the scope of cross. They're taking it as he a threat from him. asking all the different authority. I'm just establishing that she also looked at photos. I'll, I'll sustain the objection. Okay. It's beyond the scope. Dr. Hughes. Fair to ask beyond the scope. Um, based on everything in the cross-examination and the redirect, what, if any, changes do you have to any of the opinions that you provided to this jury yesterday? I objection don't compound. Overruled. I, I don't have any changes to my opinions that I gave yesterday. Um, That's an odd question. Do you still hold those within a reasonable degree of psychological probability or certainty? Also an odd question. Yes, I do. Thank you. I have no further questions. All right. Is this witness subject to recall? Yeah, you bet she yes, is. Yes, Your Honor. All right. We're done. And you can't discuss your testimony with anybody, but you're free to stay in the courtroom. So, so redirect is over. Expert testimony, okay? Thank you, Your All right, Honor. Thank you. Who's our next witness? Is it Amber Heard? 
or is it time for All lunch? Right. I think we'll go ahead. Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> Brett Hoff's face says everything. May we approach? Oh, <laughs> you saw her just go, woof. Um, this was very interesting testimony. Some I don't know what they're bringing to the court's attention. Uh, it looks like the court is going to get ready to break for lunch. So I think Amber Heard will be the next witness after lunch. And then we'll probably testify. Well, we'll absolutely testify the rest of today, the rest of tomorrow. The court is dark next week. Um, I loved earlier in the chat, somebody called it a bye week. The court has a bye week next week. The judge is going to be at a conference. And so uh, court will be dark next week. And that means that there will be no court next week. And then testimony will resume the following week. So there would be a big break there uh, for everybody to rest, reset and prepare for the end of this trial, which for the attorneys involved must be a very nice option to have a week to kind of reset and prepare. Um, the last thing I would give to someone who physically and sexually abused me is a weapon. And I think they were trying to get to her opinion of why that was done and it got shut down, but it's something that's going to be argued. I'm sure it's something that's going to be argued. I'm sure I've never seen that in cases that I've worked with domestic violence where we've, we, I've never seen that. It's an odd, it's an odd thing that big knife regarding the DSM five missing notes. As someone who knows about clinical documentation, if it isn't documented, it didn't happen. And the medical professionals in the chat have pointed that out again and again today. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. She's telling the jury it's time for lunch. Okay. Let's go ahead and take our lunch break now. Um, just do not do any outside research and uh, don't talk to anybody about the case. Okay. We'll see you back here too. Okay. Two o'clock, um, which will be one o'clock in central standard time. Um, and I will break the stream and start a new stream just so we don't end up with streaming issues. We've got a lot of chats, um, which I'm always hesitant to do when there's, you know, 54,000 of you here, but we will, we will, we will populate that and jump into the next stream. So All right. it won't we'll be, be back angry. at two then. Second. All right. Thank you. All right. Everybody's taking lunch. I'm going to leave this up to see how people exit the courtroom and we're going to go to questions and super chats with this lunch break. So, and then I expect we will resume after lunch with Amber Heard's testimony. So let's get through questions and super chats. And then, you know, we're all going to take a, take a minute and then come back to the next chat. I feel Johnny meant the only way for, out for him was death because she refused to let him go. I mean, could Johnny be brought back to the stand? He could be on rebuttal. I don't think he'll need to. I think it's more a proper item for, uh, for closing arguments really is when that'll come up. Looking into starting to study law, I find this so interesting. Love your commentary on this. You're welcome. Not all cases are this interesting for sure. And just a note in the chat, I know a lot of you are new here. Um, we do have Nightbot to shut down on um, caps because they are hard for me. So that is why there is a no caps rule in the chat. Also, for any of you that are like, you're talking over this too much, you are welcome to go find the source stream. I do commentary here, but there are source streams that you can watch this all across the interwebs with no commentary. You are welcome to go do that. Nurse note states, Amber Heard said she started Al-Anon in 2012. Um, I think it will come back around to the notes, but again, it's interesting to see. Hello, Rennell Smith. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for the super chat. Good to see you. And thank you for the shout out. Will Amber Heard's arrest be brought up? It's only fair. I think it will come up. They might be waiting until Amber Heard takes the stand to directly ask her about it. I was surprised they weren't able to get into it with this expert. I was very surprised they weren't able to get into it with this expert, but that would have to go to pre-trial rulings. Um, this whole thing is capital B bonkers fun to watch. It's very interesting to watch. And again, we don't often get to see our civil court system play out like this on television. We normally only get this in criminal cases. So it's very different to watch a civil case be executed. The way the lawyers do things are different. The amount of documentary evidence they have is different. The, they have depositions and they have prior statements and interviews. You don't normally get a lot of that in a criminal case. So it's a very different way to do it. Um, here for the Legally Blonde and Mean Girls references. Thank you for getting us through the work days. You're welcome. And I'm here to be your buddy at work all day today um, and tomorrow and part of Friday as well. We'll see about Friday. I don't, there's not court on Friday, so we might be taking a break. Um, so I didn't know how toxic court can be. Oh, court's not a fun environment. I, I'm going to tell a quick DA story. So I was, for those of you that are new here, I've been a lawyer for almost 17 years. Um, I was a deputy district attorney. There was a case where the judge 
wanted to see the search dog. It was not a drug dog. It was a human search dog. So they searched for people that were hiding places and the search dog, the court wanted to, the judge, not a judge I loved also umbridge like, but she had a hairdo like Darth Vader. It was a whole thing. The judge wanted the dog to come in and the, the cops are like, we don't want the dog to come into court. And they're like, we want the dog. The judge wanted to see the dog in court. So this giant Belgian Malinois comes into court and they are explaining how these particular scent dogs find people that are hiding because this defendant had been hiding under a building or something. And that's how they found him. And the dog was super agitated in court. And the judge is like, what is going on? And the guy's like, or the officer, the handler was explaining to the judge that the dog sense off of stress hormones. And he's like, you can't bring a dog into a court. Court is nothing but stress. Absolutely correct. Court is nothing but stress. And it was very interesting uh, to, to watch that all go down with a very agitated scent dog. So it was, it was pretty funny. We're going to have to get through some super chats. If you're super chatting now, I will not be able to get to them till I'm done with this. Um, not trial related, but shout out to Emily for making me cry this morning. I'm so sorry. As a young mom of three, your Ted talk was exactly what I needed to hear. Oh, well, I hope it was in a good way and you're welcome. I'm, I, I, I enjoy my Ted talk. Good morning, Emily. Thank you. You're welcome. We love the purple hair too. Shout out to Corinne. It's her birthday today. Happy birthday. Thank you, Jess, for sending that Good morning from the UK. Hanging on your every comment is absolutely fabulous. Thank you so much. Um, am I blocked? I don't think so, Ruth. You shouldn't be. Um, from Wales, may the fourth be with y'all. Thank you. So as someone who is physically disabled, I don't appreciate them pulling up and blocking two handicapped parking spots. Big fan of you, Emily. I don't know who's blocking parking, but I have numerous friends that are handicapped and blocking handicapped parking spots is a huge issue. Will Amber Heard's team be able to say anything to their witnesses overnight about what a mess yesterday? They shouldn't be discussing the testimony, but there's some gray zone on manner of testimony. Like, remember, you can't use your notes. Remember, you can't use this, but they can't talk about the substance of the testimony. Thomas said, good morning. Good morning. Just wanted to super chat and thank you for your daily updates. You're welcome. I'm going to try to do one over the lunch break if I can. Core TV has been so biased to Amber's favor. Not fair and equal on both sides. I mean, I think we're going to see, I think we're going to see the shift in narratives because we got Johnny Depp's side and now we're going to get Heard's side, but I haven't, um, I haven't watched all of their coverage, just some. So, oh, y'all, we binged. Where are we? Oh my God, we're at 265. <laughs> y'all, thank you. Um, we're going to celebrate. We're going to celebrate the bing for the morning. Oh, it binged. Move your head. I don't know if they show the dates on all of the notes. The dates in this entire case have been so freaking fuzzy. It's been really difficult. Good afternoon from Scotland. Thank you. The dates in this whole case have been a mess and it might confuse the shit out of the jury as well. It's been very confusing with the dates. Did you see the video of Hurd's PR team passing notes? I talked about that at the top of this stream. He's on the team. As long as it's not confidential, it's not a problem. If Dr. Hughes's testimony is found to be biased, um, could they call her testimony in previous cases in question? Not really. It's the jury gets to decide bias. It could affect her going forward if people want to work with her, but some people might want exactly what she's offering. Have you seen the TikTok where Amber's new PR guy takes a folder? I did. And I ta talked about it at the top of the stream. Again, if it's not private, it's not a problem. So hello from the UK. My workday starts at 9 a.m., but I didn't wake up fully until the trial starts at 3 p.m. Well, you're welcome. And I know we'll get to the questions about cross. It, it was a much more methodical cross um, than we're used to saying. My social work partner said, and I quote, she's not a DV expert if she implied only women can be victims and only men can be perpetrators. Mm-hmm. Interesting, isn't it? Um, 261. Yay. So excited watching your channel grow. Thank you. Hopefully T is giving credit for the 1 million on TikTok. Um, no, <laughs> my teen is not impressed at all. Is her hair going to cover her face when she's on the stand to obstruct the view for the jury to see her face? Um, I haven't seen what side and visually that's hard for me. If, when Amber Heard takes the stand after lunch and sits down, I'll be able to see which side, but yes, it could be that she's like this and the jury doesn't see her whole face. It could be. Um, Doc McMuffins for the win. I think Doc McMuffins is having the best week of this trial so far. And last week, I think this witness sounded a little too perfect when she was popping off her credentials and her credentials didn't seem to match her actual testimony. I mean, her credentials probably aren't fake, but it was odd. There was a disconnect. 
Can you clarify whether this is Amber Heard's defense or case, or are those kind of one in the same? They are one in the same. This is Amber Heard's case. Amber Heard has to do both, put on a defense to Johnny Depp's defamation case and prove her case in chief on her defamation case. So this is her case. I would call it both. It's both. Can Washington Post get in trouble if Johnny Depp proves the article was defamatory? Um, no, he didn't sue them. And I don't know how they would have known that the statements were false because they're being made by a first party. Hello, new viewer. Thank you, Lucky. Can you explain what a second chair would do, please? Um, will we see Camille Vasquez doing cross or direct? We've already seen her doing direct. It's now Amber Heard's team's turn to call the witnesses. So Johnny Depp's team will just be doing cross. And there are lots and lots of chairs in this trial. Each of them would have been assigned different depositions, different witnesses, and different things that they're breaking up. So um, I don't know what witnesses she's been assigned. I wonder if she will be assigned to Amber Heard. And we will know that when the opposing side of the witness that's up starts making objections. That's the lawyer that's doing the cross. What does treating the witness as hostile mean? It means when you call a direct witness and you want to ask them leading questions because they're not answering. So you treat them as opposite to your side, not on the same side as you. Because when they're on your side, you ask direct questions. And when they're you're cross-examining them, when they're opposite you, you ask leading questions. Have both Dr. Curry and Dr. Hughes been present for all the testimony given? Um, they're able to be. I don't know if they've done it by stream or have been physically present. They're able to take all the testimony into consideration. Um, Hughes's testimony won't be thrown out. Speculation, what? Do you think Amber yells at her lawyers in resource at recess after court? I don't know. Um, they should bring up Amber's TV arrest and video of her being violent. I mean, we will see that come up and they might just argue it or they might recall the witness or they might ask Dr. Curry. But they already established that Dr. Hughes discounted some of the things she didn't deem credible or relevant to her. So they might just argue it in closing and not ask her, like not give her a chance to explain it. Do you think all these people ignore the judge's orders of not reading and looking at stuff? Uh, they shouldn't, um, but I have no way to know if people do or not, but they shouldn't. Most jurors take their jury duty pretty seriously. Um, so why is the gallery not rising when called? Uh, the gallery is not obligated to rise for the jury. They are obligated to rise for the judge. And we saw another question in the stream of someone who was present in court saying, hey, um, they were rising to take a look at Johnny Tapp. So that's fair too. Um, is her saying it was just a post-it lying on the stand? I think it was narrowly selective because at the time what she was talking about was just a post-it. At the time, her dates were just on a post-it. I think it was narrow. So um, at the end of the day yesterday, did you see the clip of the PR guy? We talked about that at the top of the stream. Um, is she aware of Amber's previous conviction where both were women? I don't know. They didn't get into it. I wonder, and they did get into it on cross. They asked one question. She said, I was not aware which is interesting. I wonder if Amber Heard's team is so bad because of money. I don't know. We'll see how they do on direct. If Johnny and um, the muffin can't watch media or be on social media, they can, they can watch except when they, they can't talk about their testimony when they're under oath, but they can look at whatever they want. They're not under the same restrictions as other witnesses because they're the parties in the case. Do you think that her stating yesterday that victims forget details lays foundation? Uh, maybe. I mean, possibly that's, this witness was there to set up Amber Heard's testimony to be seen in the light most favorable to Amber Heard. That's why it's there. Um, so it's there to give context. So that's what that's for. Let's see. Um, didn't Dr. Hughes admit she wasn't Amber Heard's psychologist when these events took place? She was only her friend. I didn't hear her say they were friends. I don't, I don't think that they were friends before this. She's a forensic examiner. She's supposed to be doing forensics. Isn't doing a vows and test to turn to court for evidence still working for the court? Kind of. I mean, it's generally working for the private parties, not being appointed directly by the court. Um, how many people from the law firm do you think they had working last night? All. I think this is an all hands on deck case for most of these firms. So. So what happens now if she's caught lying, but says it's an error in the transcript? I think blaming it on the transcript is kind of rude, but it's pointed out that she didn't correct it and maybe she didn't care. Um, they'll, they can argue it or they can just leave it hanging for the jury to make an assumption about. Um, no court next week, correct? Can JD bring in new witnesses on rebuttal? Yes, they can bring in anyone that properly rebuts the evidence that Amber Heard said. So they could save some uh, witnesses for rebuttal and they might have done so. How come they're allowing this expert to elaborate instead of answer yes or no questions on the cross-examination? When Johnny Depp's expert witness were being crossed, they were cut off constantly. Different style in cross-examination, uh, different decision by the lawyers and strategy. Really, it depends on the lawyer. Um, 
Do you reckon he's still yelling at her? I'm not sure what that's referencing. Uh, apologies. Hey, lovely. In your free time, would you consider sitting with us and covering the cross with Dr. Uh, sitting with us to, and cover the cross of Dr. Curry? I break it down in today's podcast episode a little bit, but if that's if you guys want me to look at the cross of Dr. Curry, like the replay of it, I can do that in a members only live stream for sure. Question is Dr. Curry limited in what she can talk about, talk to Depp's team about? No. Um, she can't talk about her own testimony, but she's an expert. She can prep, help them prep cross. So if there is any transcript or recordings of her personal interviews with these people, what, um, was that in evidence? Maybe not sure. Keep it the great work. Thank you. Greetings from Ibiza. Sounds lovely. Always wanted to go. We'll do someday. She seems to be reaching pretty hard to disagree with everything the lawyer says. I mean, that's cross-examination. That's what's going to happen. Today is also the 49th anniversary of the Kent State shootings. I did not know that. Um, Legal Bites crew is saying he isn't controlling her enough. Do you think the same? Um, without hearing why other lawyers believe what they believe, I think it was strategy. I don't feel like he was out of control with this witness. I don't feel like this witness was running over him. I think it was strategy because he was following up. And this is why he was following up with how she said things to question her further. So I think he wanted to hear what she was saying. I think it was strategy. More than 40. I mean, yes, we had more than 50,000 today so far. Is this good or bad for Johnny Depp? It's hard to tell. It depends what they do with it. But I think it's meant to be helpful to Amber Heard. I think it's helpful to Amber Heard. How the jury will weigh that against the other experts is unknown at this point for me. So um, thank you for sharing this, Diva. And I think that this is something a lot of those watching takes away from this testimony. How the jury will take it, I don't know. Um, is this going well for JD? Is this lawyer nailing her? It was a very methodical cross with some important points for argument later. But did, were there any moments where you're like, ah, gotcha? Not really, not in such a dramatic way, but getting her to admit that she discounted a number of things, getting going through her methodology on the forms, they were laying a foundation for Dr. Curry to come in and kind of annihilate this testimony. These are building blocks, right? You're making a puzzle in a trial. Do you... Um, do you think Johnny Depp's lawyer will bring up the essay hoax she testified from about yesterday? No, I think they're going to let that hang and use it for argument. Does anyone have any sympathy for Amber Heard? Maybe her mental state makes me sad for her. Same. It seems she legit believes her lies. She might. Do you think the jury will take this witness as seriously as Curry? Maybe. It's up to them. And if Amber Heard believes her own lies, is it defamatory? Because it has to be willfully false. And that's part of why this matters. Do you think the male attorneys can get away with more aggression than female attorneys? Sometimes. Seems male anger can seem more legitimate than female anger. It depends on how it's done. But yes, I think sometimes that is very true, um, especially in the eyes of a jury where society kind of accepts anger from men in a different way than it accepts anger from women. But I think that can also change with uh, POC attorneys as well. So I don't think a black male attorney gets the same kind of leeway, if you know what I mean. Um, hi from Belgium. Love your coverage and your insights in the case. Yesterday was wild. I guess today will be too. Can they bring the DA from the former girlfriend into the cross? Not the DA. Generally, it would need to be the former girlfriend or reports. They can use reports to impeach on it. Question, where can we get the green mega pint? Um, my Amazon shop is listed down in the description. Can you give a shout out to my 70 year old dad, Mitch? Hey, Mitch. Happy, happy. It, what it, is it happy birthday? No, it's not happy. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the addiction of the channel. <laughs> he said, my hair is fire. Thank you, Mitch. You'd get along with my dad. Um, she put a line next to James Franco because he wasn't an intimate partner, but under James, she put Elon who Amber dated seems like a contradiction. The lawyer didn't really point out that contradiction, which was interesting, isn't it? Um, so that was interesting to me. I'm populating, I'm working on populating the next stream while we're, while we're talking. If Amber Heard considers retreating as admirable, admirable, then why is it reported that she pursues him on many occasions and kept him from leaving? I think they let that hang in because they're going to argue it, but they got the doctor to admit that leaving an argument is admirable. This is all building the foundations for closing arguments at this point. You don't need the jury to pick up every nugget you're putting down as you're going along. You need to build it so you can argue it later. During the audio, notice Amber's mouth quirk up a bit. I didn't see that. Uh, would the jury think she, I don't know what the, how the jury would interpret that. They might've been struggling to listen like the rest of us were. Will Dr. Hughes's poor testimony affect how many firms hire her for expertise? It depends. I mean, if she's being hired for this type of work, they might, it might not matter at all. This trial is hard for me. Fair. Um, 
Thank you for sharing your experience. Those are hard experiences. I can see Amber was hurt by someone clearly was. However, uh, she is at fault. So we will see um, whether she says she was, a, whether the jury believes she was abused here or not. She's clearly had a very traumatic past. Can JD's lawyers ask Amber directly if she manufactured her bruises? Uh, they could. Is it considered leading? It's leading. You're allowed to lead on cross-examination. She's going to deny it, but they're allowed to ask it. Isn't Dr. Curry not subject to recall? No, she's subject to recall. Um, she's an expert. She's allowed to be in court. I am such a court nerd forever, 30 year old with a career. Should I go to law school? P.S. I think Cross needs to take a breath. Um, I can't tell you if law school is right for you, but it's never too late to go to law school if it is right for you. You determining that's for you. Um, can you do an overview of who the lawyers are on each team during the break? Oh, I don't know if I can today. I don't know if I will have time, but um, I will always, when they stand up, I will always try to say depths to I heard side. And as you're watching this, you'll kind of get a sense for who everybody is. Uh, social media is also really helpful in breaking that down too. All I'm saying is that Dr. Curry had her shit together and notes and this and docs together in comparison. She definitely did. So weird that she didn't include anything about the box and just putting IPV. But Johnny feels to me as she already up made up her mind. She might have already made up her mind and they can argue that. Um, or Dr. Curry can rebut that. I wonder how she would respond if she was asked to evaluate uh, the marital given uh, as if this had been a same-sex relationship. I don't know. Um, having PTSD diagnosis myself, I found Dr. Curry very credible. She is a PTSD expert. This lady's evaluation feels like a joke and it's irritating to watch. I'm sure many feel that way. I find it more interesting that Hughes has just dismissed all the documentation notes, witnesses that she doesn't agree with. I think so too. I think that was one of the shining moments across. Um, not a dumb TMI question. What happens if Johnny Depp or Amber Heard really need to go to the loo? They have to wait. Can they go when not on break? No, they need to wait. Not a TMI question. They have to wait till the court's on break, the morning break or the lunch break. Um, so they have to wait. Uh, can Dr. Curry be in the gallery taking notes? Yes. Is it possible someone supervised? She supervised did the testing. It's possible they didn't get into it. So even if that's true, they didn't think it was a big deal. Um, so. Thank you. Love the guidance and understanding where this is all going. The lawyer, lawyers and lawyering things. <laughs> the most WAP. Yes, we are professionals here. So absolute, absolute WAP. That's our definition of WAP up in here in the Law Nerds chat. Afternoon over here and I'm on my lunch break. Uh, came across you yesterday. Welcome. Defo enjoying your input. Thank you. Um, how much of these new documents changed the plaintiff's cross-examination? Do you think the lawyers were up all night reviewing Plans for 300K tattoo. I don't know. We haven't thought of plans for 300K. Um, I haven't thought of a new tattoo because I just got some recent ones, but I'm always down for more tattoos. And I think they were probably up reviewing them. Um, and I think, yes, I think they were probably up reviewing them up all night. Maybe not. They have lots of lawyers to go over things. So, you know, many hands makes light work. Do you think that they put Hugh's testimony before Amber to prep the jury for potential outbursts? I think it was to give context to Heard's testimony for sure. Um, what goes into choosing an expert, how they've testified in the past, how they'll come across to the jury, what perspective you're looking for. Different experts have different flavors and different um, areas of expertise. They wanted her to be an expert in interpersonal violence. And I think a lot of that expertise was forgot because she just got grilled about PTSD. And I think Depp's team is hoping that if it's shown that her PTSD diagnosis is bad with Dr. Curry, the PTSD expert, then the jury will give less credibility to the rest of her um, expert testimony, which they are allowed to do. Why wasn't Britney Spears's trial televised? Um, she didn't have a trial. She had a lot of hearings in the conservatorship. It wasn't televised because the court didn't allow it. Probate proceedings are different. So the court didn't allow it. And then the audio program got shut down and we lost that too. When talking about how much she gets paid, she said the testimony was wrong, but didn't have time to edit. What type of testimony can be corrected after uh, transcripts? If a transcript is wrong, you get it and you have an opportunity to edit it. You have an opportunity to review it and say, no, that's not what I said. So she didn't take the time to do that. Um, do you think Amber is a victim? I think Amber, Amber is a victim. I don't think she's a victim to the extent that maybe she says she is, but I think there are horrible things that have happened to her. I don't think she's a victim. I believe she did this because she knew she was going to leave. I mean, in this relationship, it might, that might be the case. We'll see what the jury sees. Does the jury see a large amount of Johnny supporters outside the court? I don't know where they're parking, but they might. I don't know if they know they're Johnny supporters or not, but they might. Could that sway them? It might. I mean, they're human. They're seeing a lot of things and that might be the only outside impact they see on the trial. 
Um, didn't she say yesterday that Amber Heard went to Al-Anon when being a sommelier bad? I don't know Al-Anon well enough to know about Al-Anon's relationship with someone's own alcohol um, use. So I can't really address that, but it's an interesting potential contradiction that might leave the jury with questions. Why are they arguing about who abused who? Because of the statement that Amber Heard was a victim in her op-ed, and that's what the defamation's about. So um, that's why they're arguing over this. So did Amber really become the face of the issue? I think there is a way to narrow the question, but they are arguing over who did it and whether it's defamatory. I think they could narrowly tailor the question. They're not going to. Both these parties want the other one's dirt in the street. Um, is counsel allowed to coach experts? They uh, absolutely have conversations with experts beforehand. Coaching is an odd word because it implies some intent, but they talk about how to testify. They go over their reports so they understand. They prep with their witnesses, and prep is different than like telling them what to say. Um, you want the truth, you can't handle the truth. I mean, especially when it comes to the turd, we're not going to be able to handle the truth. You are so welcome as a person with PTSD and a person who has worked with kids with trauma. I think Amber Heard is a liar. I mean, and I think a lot of people are coming to that conclusion. So why would the judge not allow any reference to the past arrest? It's probably subject of previous rulings. If Amber Heard opens the door, can uh, JD recall Dr. Hughes? They won't need to. They'll do it through Dr. Curry. Thank you so much. Found you because of the trial working from home. Well, I'm glad to be in the background as you're working from home. Um, T Doggy said you should reach out to Ludwig or the other streamers. They are all reacting to this and your expertise would provide great input. Um, I, we have been so busy doing this. It has been very hard. Um, poor cross examination didn't dig into the time framing. They didn't. Um, they let her expand on her answers. I wasn't, I wasn't put off by that though. They didn't play the abuse minimizing audio. Um, they might do that with Dr. Curry though. There might be a, might be a um, reason. I'm fangirl dying. Bailey Sarian is in here. I fangirl die when Bailey Sarian is in here. <laughs> so uh, she's lovely. She's a lovely creator. I enjoy her, her content. And I generally, I watch a lot of Bailey's content when I'm either doing my makeup or unwinding. I find her content relaxing because I'm a weirdo and I like, you know, murder makeup and Mondays. Honestly, a little disappointed in cross. That's fair. It wasn't um, a fire and brimstone. I expected them to go through the list of types of IPV she testified about yesterday and flipped the script. I, I thought so too. Um, they sure didn't. After Amber, after AH team, now JD's can't come back, right? No. So when it's your case, you do the direct, the other side does the cross, and then you do the rebuttal because you are bearing the burden. Question, does the jury deliberate during the trial? No, they have to wait until all the jury instructions are in and all the evidence is in at the close of the case, which means this jury can't have conversations about what's going on in court at all, which would be so stressful. Why would the prior arrest um, not be admissible? It, it might be more prejudicial than probative. And if this person had never seen it, then there might not be a foundation for it. It's probably subject to prior court rulings. And I would be curious as to what those rulings are, but it would be subject to prior court rulings rulings. So that I think is why. Um, so that's, I think that's, I think why. Let me see. Um, I saw a news clip claiming the jury is mostly young. Would they be allowed to disclose this? I mean, it's their impression. It doesn't really, it, what does young mean? I don't think it, um, it, I don't think it harms them to say that. So that. I think Legal Bites thought she may have opened the door yesterday when she said Amber Heard had no signs of a personality disorder before being with JD. I think a lot of doors were opened, but the court made the rulings they made. Um, there's, a, yes. Question, what would be your first question to Amber Heard if you were on cross? I will tell you that after I see her testimony. Um, why is she speaking for Amber Heard? She was definitely speaking in like the first person. It was weird. Disappointed they didn't or couldn't discuss the DV. Um, I think it's important context too, but I don't think that's the end of that. I think that might still come up. Um, I won't be surprised if that still comes up. So we will see. I'm not, I don't think this is the end of this. So um, the cross felt rather underwhelming given the direct yesterday. Was this their strategy? I think it was a methodical cross with a lot of points made to save for argument. I think part of this is to allow Dr. Curry to come in on rebuttal. They know they have a rebuttal. So how much do you need to do? 
you know, that's strategy. And I think it's not a bad strategy to let Dr. Curry, the expert, come in and then be like, but this and kind of drop the bombs. Because again, here's the thing about rebuttal. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> here's the thing about rebuttal. Rebuttal is closer in time to when the jury is deliberating than now. So huge points made now could still get forgotten, but rebuttal being very close in time might not be. So I think that that is a really important point to remember that the rebuttal testimony will be closer in time. Amazing change in her turtle posture. Um, she's not physically facing the jury like yesterday. Um, that's not surprising for an expert that on cross, the expert locks in with the lawyer and on direct, they explain to the jury like they're teaching. That doesn't surprise me at all. Doesn't surprise me at all. As someone who's taking so many tests by these doctors, you think Amber Heard would learn the right and wrong way to answer. That's something Dr. Curry really talked about quite a lot, saying that this is the, the way that this is done or not done and what have you. Um, let's see. As Dr. Curry was presented as an expert in PTSD, her testimony holds more weight. This expert is too biased in my opinion. Um, and the jury gets to decide there's a jury instruction that will go to exactly this where they're told they get to give the weight to the expert. And if they find someone is biased, then they can use that to determine credibility. Colleen said, my husband started watching your channel with me. We enjoy your commentary perspective and colorful vocabulary. Fuck. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> Dr. Curry pointed out Amber was skilled in being evasive. I think Dr. Curry was end routing this testimony. And I think we see how effective that was when we keep Dr. Curry's testimony in mind to this testimony and the fact that Dr. Curry will have another chance to testify if they choose to do that. Um, would they ask during voir dire if jurors had ever been in therapy? I don't know. I don't know if they would. They might have. We didn't see voir dire. They can. What are the results of a test hearsay? I. I'm not sure how to answer that. Perhaps Amber Heard is repeating the cycle of violence she experienced. It's possible the, um, the DV expert would need to testify about that. They didn't ask, but also that didn't give an explanation for Amber Heard either. And that might be why they strategically chose not to ask. Um, what Dr. Hughes just explained is not PTSD. It's just the basics of that. I wonder if she knows what PTSD is. I, I think that's what they were getting to on how full of a life Heard lived and being like, you said it was this, but then it's this. I think so. Um, and Amber Heard can have PTSD from prior life experiences, but now the narrative has shifted. We're all still talking about the PTSD. They're all thinking about the PTSD. It is shift from the IPV. And that might've been the strategy too, to shift it away from the IPV. During the cross of Amber, are Depp's attorneys allowed to ask if Heard has ever been arrested? It depends on what she says and it depends on previous court rulings. So yes, sometimes. Um, I don't think they will bring Dr. Hughes back. I think they'll bring Dr. Curry back. Um, Meredith said, I had a boating accident as a teen and lost a finger. I always refer to it as when I cut my thumb off as a turn of phrase does not imply it was intentional. Meredith, an excellent point that's been brought up a lot. When I say they keep trying to make fetch happen, Herd's team keeps trying to make these um, very hyperbolic texts literal. And I just, <laughs> M Law, can they bring up the video or key to Musk without Johnny Depp? Um, in Amber Heard's cross, I think they can bring up the elevator videos. Yeah. Emily, you got to address why cross didn't talk about Hughes saying on the stand that Heard made statements that was, uh, distressed when they were challenged. I don't know why they didn't bring it up on cross. They might just be waiting to bring it up again with Dr. Curry. Um, I think they opened the door too, but that was the judge's ruling. Have prosecution been making references to Amber Heard's past DV charges? No, the plaintiffs have not in this case. Again, prosecution only in a criminal case, but they have not. Um, and we will see what happens when Amber Heard takes the stand, and that's probably when that will come in. So I think that's when that will come in. Thank you for explaining everything. You're welcome. Love the hair. Thank you. I mean, we did it. It was like a year ago that we did the hair. Did you see the... YouTube Raven Simone ran into Amber Heard at a Tesla charging station. Amber was crying on the phone about something also locked her keys and phone in the car. Uh, no, I didn't see that. But if you, it's really hard to lock your keys in a Tesla says the Tesla owner, like really hard to do. I really hard to do. Why does it seem like the entire Depp Heard marriage was taped? It feels that way. And they haven't addressed it a lot. I believe that'll come up in Amber Heard's either direct or cross. Um, the audio does show different things today. That's why they played the audio. I like that they did. Do you understand why they think these tapes are, do you understand why they think these tapes are helpful? No, 
They all seem very, very helpful to Johnny. Also, we've been listening to Johnny's side of this story for quite a while. Her team has a different perspective, but I think they're showing, um, I think they're showing that he was trying to leave and they're trying to work out a relationship, but also they're trying to allow this expert to characterize it as those arguments are Johnny Depp's control. They're trying to reframe what's on the audio. And for a lot of us that have been listening to this for three, now four weeks, we're like, you're, you can't reframe it. It's too late. The frame is fucking hung at this point. Um, this sounds like a phone call. And isn't it illegal to record without others' knowledge in California? Isn't that what Taylor Swift sued about? Yes, it's illegal. Yes, it's a two-party consent state. I don't think these are phone call recordings. I think they were like physical phone recordings in person. Um, they're allowed in because both parties allowed them in in this civil case. That's why they're coming in. So I can't wait till we get to find out why they were made, why she was recording. It has to come up in her testimony. Do you think they couldn't bring up Amber's DV arrest because only Dr. Hughes brought it up? Um, I already addressed it, but I think there was a previous court ruling on it. So the recording is going to come up when Amber testifies. And it's clear, I think for me, that she's louder in those tapes and she's the one where the recording is closer to her. Um, thank you so much for the compliment. I appreciate it. I love doing what I do. How is withholding medication to help him with his drug abuse helping? I don't know. Is it common to object more during redirect? Um, yeah, it's, it's, you want to narrow the field and not give them too much legway to run away and undo what you did on your cross. Redirect is to fix any damage done on cross and you want to kind of protect your damage that you did on cross. Her recording is scripted. She is secretly recording. We're going to see that, I think, in the cross examination of her. So, um, Please tell us how Amber Cord recordings were made without Johnny Depp's knowledge to be admissible. We just addressed that by agreement. And because some of these are very good for Johnny, they actually um, help his case. So I think that's why the parties have agreed to which recordings are admissible and agreed that um, recordings between the two of them that have both of them on are going to be admissible. So that is why. Uh, triggered by his drinking and attending Al-Anon and still drinking one to two bottles a day of wine around him. Yep. And being a level three sommelier, apparently. Tried to have an open mind, but I can't with this witness. It can be hard. Um, Emily, I have my contracts final tonight. Any tips? Don't overthink it. Explain your thought process and reasoning. I tried to say I'm in court. I can't to my boss and it didn't work. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm in court today. Um, so were her lawyers hired yes men versus competence? I don't know. I think her lawyers have a very good reputation in their area. Um, they probably just don't go to trial a lot. They are trying to get Amber to sound like a saint. They're going to do that. That's their job. That's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to re try to reframe this entire trial. The problem is they go second and a lot of the jury's already there. A lot of water under the bridge. The shit's already out of the horse. However you want to say it, it's going to be hard to reframe. Uh, she was recording. Yep, she was. Her attorney starts off okay and then falls apart the longer the questions go. A, a bit. She doesn't seem to be able to listen and then redirect. It seems like she has her questions planned and doesn't um, do that on her feet well. It sounds like she's saying it's okay to argue, to escalate an argument. It was odd testimony about the reactionary violence and stuff. It was odd testimony. So we t Johnny Depp testified about the monster. Amber Heard's team is going to take it out of context or try to reframe the context that's most beneficial to their case. That's what they do. Um, the jury will get to decide bias. Yes, they will have to ask Amber about the recordings. They should address it on her direct examination. Grant said Dr. C uh, testified that when someone with Amber Heard's personality disorders tend to project blame, if they stayed in the jury's mind, do you think they could relate Amber's doctor notes may, as just projecting her actions? Maybe. Or Dr. Curry's going to come back and testify and kind of tie that up in a more definitive way. Um, why was the RN allowed to see the notes but not Dr. H? Because they're the notes of the RN. So Dr. H is allowed to see the notes, but they can't be admitted into testify into testimony, no, into evidence without that person testifying. So the nurse's notes came in because the nurse said, these are my notes and was questioned about them and cross-examined about them. And we have more information about them, but just the notes by themselves don't come in. The notes aren't evidence. The notes are the foundation or the basis for part of the expert opinion, but the notes themselves don't come in. Um, I want to see Umbridge bend and snap. New viewer question, um, why are secret non-consensual audio recordings allowed in court? We just addressed that by consent in this point. I work at Costco, but in Canada, we don't get lemon poppy seed. 
going to have to talk about and tell them with the bakery. Yeah, here we get lemon poppy seed. They're fucking good. Happy Nurses Week. Happy Nurses Week, nurses. My BFF Sky <laughs> and I have been invested in this try. We love watching you. I see you every day. It's good to see you. Can you say hi to Sky? It will make her smile. Hi, Sky. Hope it makes you smile. Love seeing you guys every day. Um, because all you did, because you did this for so long, does this stuff not make you anxious? This is stressing me out. Oh, sometimes it still does. But not anxious in a bad way, anxious in like a amusement park roller coastery, not kind of way, not an anxious in a holy shit, I'm about to die kind of way. Like nerve sighted is really what it is. It's like I enjoy it, but I'm like, oh, what's gonna happen next? So nerve sighted. Um they talked about the monster and Johnny Depp's testimony. Thank you, guys. I'm gonna try to, I'm trying to get through these because I'm going to have to take a pause as we switch over streams in just a minute. I think that the knife mimics Johnny Depp's way of speaking. I, they're trying to make a lot happen with the knife, but they're trying to reframe it. They've got to. I took it as a threat. It seemed like a threat when Johnny Depp's team put it in, and now she's going to be like, it's not a threat. It's I don't know. She's going to have to explain that gift. Do we know if Amber took one test before the other? It seems like she took Dr. Curry's tests first, which will matter, but Dr. Curry will explain how it matters. So it seems that Dr. Curry's tests were completed before these other tests were completed. Just wanted to say thank you. You're welcome. Been subscribed since the Kanye leaked contract. That's right when my channel turned over into just covering pop culture legal commentary. Love your commentary and explanation. Thanks you. Thank you. I love talking. I love breaking it down. I'm an Aussie. That saying is a dark sense of humor. I mean, you know who? I, I don't know. I'm coming up on my 20 year wedding anniversary, and we've talked about like literally jokingly, like no, we're in it till death. Like we're old. We're here. Hopefully, that's not soon. The judge has been very patient. Um, not all judges are the same. Not all judges are this patient, but this seems to be this judge's style because we have seen it be consistent no matter which side it is. Um, I don't see Amber is tired. I checked and she had on more makeup yesterday. I don't know. Um, I'm pretty sure you're my spirit animal. You were tattooed with purple hair and HP and Star Wars nerd and also an intellectual. I also like Doctor Who's and, and Supernatural. You're tons of fun and something special. Thank you so much. Um, super sticker. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. It's been amazing. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm here. I love doing this. Amber could have lied to her. Yep. Amber could have lied to her. And that's what they're going to argue. They're not going to argue it with her. They're going to say, oh, so all this is based on Amber's reporting. Okay. So sure. It's all based on her reporting. Well, we know she sees it that way. Can they read back the court transcript? They can. I don't know if they needed to. They could have done that today. Recall of witnesses comes at the close of Amber Heard's case. So when we get to rebuttal witnesses. Congratulations on the bing. I found you through this trial and I'm hooked. Shout out to my SIL to B. I got her onto your channel too. Love from HSVAL. Thank you, Colleen. And hello to your sister-in-law. What webcam do you use? It's great looking for a new one. I have a whole list of the equipment I use to stream on my Amazon store. So amazon.com slash um, I don't know, Emily Baker or something. <laughs> Me, something like that. It'll be in the chat. There it is. That's the Amazon link. And it's in my description too. And I will say, if you guys want to stay in the loop, um, if you're in North America, textemily.com is where you can do that because that is where I can text you reminders when, uh, when YouTube decides that they're not going to notify you. Do you see fetch during eval objection speculation? They cannot attest to fetch sustain. Yes, they are trying to make fetch happen, but they do not know her. You're fabulous. Thank you. As a paralegal 20 plus years, I'm going to lose my mind over the fact these attorneys don't have multiple copies of their exhibits, right? Like what the fuck is happening, folks? They've been preparing for this trial for years. What is happening? Um, has the abusive nature of the recording come up yet? Nope, it has not. Funny how the only way out is death is in wedding vows. I mean, it is in most of them. You're going to hit 300K before the end of this trial. Maybe. Thank you. We'll see. I mean, I'm here for it. Let's do it. We're going to, we're going to take on, we're going to take on YouTube. Sorry. We're coming for you. Legal Eagle. <laughs> we're coming for you. We're not going to take your subscribers away. There's room for everyone. We're just going to have the same amount sitting in the hospital with my mom and your commentary is helping me de-stress. Uh, Crystal, all the best to you and to your mom. Thanks for your coverage. You're welcome. Glad to be back. I'm here for uh, hopefully the rest of this trial. The end of school is coming up quickly though. And then we've got some plans. I think this should set a new president precedent. Candy should always proudly be displayed in court. Agreed. Um, motion granted for candy in court. Always. Um, hey, from Nashville. Also a fellow band mom here. My kid graduated from Overton and I loved every minute. Have the best time, girl. Thank you. We are happy to be here in Middle Tennessee. 
Um, I should be writing mine too. Also, I love Dragon Age of Mass Effect. I love you guys chatting with each other in super chats. Thank you for your real and entertaining commentary. You're welcome. You've made it easier to follow the trial. That is my goal. Um, you're believable because you explain what's fair on both sides. I really try to, I really try to point out what's fair to both sides because we're watching this trial again. When you're calling, I really do see it almost as like live sports commentary. When you're calling a game, you're calling plays that are good on both sides. You're calling plays that are bad on both sides. You're calling when the roughest seems unfair. That's the goal. Um, even if internally you're like, it'll be interesting if this side wins, you, you still want to call both sides. Which side do you feel like looks more favorable right now? Johnny Depp has had all of his evidence in um, and his side should look more favorable right now. They've rested their case. They should be you know, leading, but it's why a jury is told, um, it's why a jury is told to not make up their mind to all of the evidences in, because it is the natural indica indication to be like, oh, well, I heard this side first. That seems, that seems like what it is. So it is a fight for her side to reframe the rest of this trial in the light most favorable to them. And it's hard to do. He didn't ask her about using the term choking. He didn't, they didn't talk about it at all. As a DV expert, I'm confused how she messed up the term strangulation and the disconnection is extremely important in DV. I'm frustrated she got that wrong. She used very colloquial language with some things. And again, it made it feel like she was gossiping about what a friend told her about what happened in their relationship. It was odd. Left law school when COVID hit to work and help the family. Your coverage has inspired me to go back. Yay. Finished reapplying this morning. Congratulations. Contributing to the birthday cake fund for both of us. Thank you. Um, and congratulations. I can't imagine what the pandemic would have done in law. I can't imagine how disruptive that would have been. Thank you. Thank you. Evidence is my weakest subject failed the bar by eight points this past February. Um, you got it. You can do it. Your commentary and explanation of evidence rules may just help evidence. Watching this in real time will help understand evidence. It's evidence is hard. Theoretically it's easier in real time. So watching this is easier. Um, Valentina said, my daughter was diagnosed with ADHD and autism. I showed her your channel and let her know people with similar DC can do anything they want. She only focused on the purple hair. I love that so much. Thank you. And we can, and we do, and it's needed. You know, we can't just, we can't just let all the neurotypical people run the world. We got to bring in some flavor with the neurodivergence. Is it odd that the expert says she was hired by the lawyer and team and worked with them often? No. Acting like such an advocate, defender, friend. Uh, it's the acting like a protector is odd. The fact that a particular expert works with a particular legal team is not odd. It's pretty typical. Can the jury watch the news? No. When they're done, they can, but no, they can't do anything. They have to be very careful. Can intentionally leaving things hanging come across as giving up or not having a solid argument? It could. It could to the jury. Um, it depends on how it all wraps up. Thank you for the greetings. Um, Jasmine said I was abused by my husband and the last thing I would do was give him a weapon. I remember hiding all the knives in the house. Jasmine, that is a more typical experience in my experience, a much more typical experience. Why are they not bringing up the long-term effects of MDMA? I don't know. Probably because that doc is not qualified as an expert in substance abuse. And there are other doctors on the witness list that might be able to cover it. Been listening to your stream since yesterday. May the fourth be with you as well. Um, Valerie G said, when they make the decision on the case, will we know how the jury deliberated and how they came to the case decision? Or is it a mystery? It depends if the jury asks questions and that those questions are published to the public, then we'll get to see their thought process. And it depends if the jury talks publicly after the trial. So it depends. Generally, you just get a, they found this way, they found that way. Um, and then we have to use context clues. Is it significant that Depp's team pitched their side first? It can be. Um, it can be because the jury does compare. I, uh, Lilith said, I think Amber was lying, laying the groundwork for Johnny to accidentally die from an OD. He walked away from her before she could finish. I mean, there are theories and lots of theories. I'm not going to speculate on that. Um, Susie said, you share a birthday with my big sis that I lost to breast cancer. She was a fantastic person. And so are you. Well, thank you so much. Here's to Kathy. Cheers, Kathy. Um, remembered fondly. I wish she was here to watch this trial with me. She would have loved you too. Thank you, Susie. That's very, very kind. Um, and I'm sorry for your loss. Emma Swan said, can the jury speculate on evidence like notes or can they only factor in stuff that's said on the stand? They can only factor in what's been admitted into evidence and what's said on the stand. That said, it's very hard for humans to parse out things they've heard, observed, and seen. My lovely wife is a hotline call support for individuals who are in abusive relationships. Uh, God bless your wife for the work that she does. And she is appalled by the gender bias in this expert statements. Um, 
I think a lot of people are. If yesterday's accusation on sexual and vaginal injury were true, why didn't they address it during Johnny's cross-exam? I don't know. I don't know. They didn't ask about it at all. And I imagine we will see some medical records, maybe. But they're also categorizing medical records as treatment notes from her therapists. So we'll just have to see. Just started watching your channel. Welcome. Um, how does showing Dr. Hughes pictures of JD's finger help? She isn't an MD, right? Thanks. You're welcome. Um, Yesterday in her examination, she was talking about minimal injury. So I think they were trying to quantify, well, is this not a minimal injury? Um, so they needed to ask about that because they needed to, again, remind the jury that the pictures they saw in the morning of Amber Heard's face were redness and the pictures they saw of Johnny Depp's finger a few weeks ago was a severed finger. I think that was more to remind the jury what we're talking about when this expert kept saying, well, minimal violence. Um, if she testified twice a year, shouldn't she know to not bring cheat sheets? Yes. Uh, T Wilson said in light of this trial, I really want to recommend the book by men, um, book men who hate women. It's a great, uh, dissection of how toxic masculinity hurts men's today. I haven't read it. So thank you for sharing your opinion on it. What do you think of the trial so far? It's been fascinating. Um, what are we going to do next week? We're going to go back to our regularly scheduled programming of coffee and cursey words on Tuesday and Friday night live for next week. Um, and we're going to catch up on rust and all the other things we haven't caught up on. Does JD need all these lawyers? Yes. Um, yes, he does. This is a big case with a lot going on and a lot of witnesses. These lawyer, this team of lawyers is working a lot. Why wouldn't Johnny Depp's lawyer ask the psychologist why she would believe that there was really bad SA when there's no medical record? He kind of alluded to it at the end of cross, but I would need to go back and watch the end of cross. He brought it up. Um, I'm not sure the exact demographics. I think it's online, the men, woman breakdown, but I'm not sure who will be deliberating. I believe in Virginia, it's only five that deliberate. Is there enough evidence to turn this into a domestic case? No, the statute of limitations has run on all of this. Are they going to question her about the post-it versus having multiple pages? They didn't, not really relevant. The jury saw what they saw. Question, do you think Johnny Depp's team not bringing in a arrest as part of the psych eval, leaving it for cross or rebuttal? Maybe, I think the door was open too. Um, Let's see. Um, is it really, I really want them to require Amber to recreate how she used the melodic. I mean, we'll see what she says on her testimony. I want them to ask it too. We all want them to ask it, but we will see. Um, I respect Dr. Curry more than the witness. I think a lot of people probably do. Thank you, Kristen, for the super chat. Um, since working for Council of Judiciary, I've become more interested in cases. Love your commentary. You're welcome. Thank you, Tamar. I'm going to try to get through these quickly, you guys, because I have got to take, ooh, we've only got 10 more minutes before the next stream starts. Seems to me that Herd's expert is a liar. Maybe. I'm going to look for any with questions and get into them. Thank you all for the super chats. If I didn't get to a question, I apologize. Um, but a lot of these are statements that you guys are sharing with each other, which I appreciate. Um, they didn't talk about the hoax headline. They let it, they let it hang there. And I think it'll come up and cross. And he bets Johnny team had the foresight to get a grumpy, um, that was left on his bed. DNA tested. We will see. I don't think they did that. Does the defense get a rebuttal? Um, I noticed Dr. Hughes is subject to recall. The defense might get a sir rebuttal. Um, can Johnny's team ask more leading questions? No, it's the same as direct. Is there a way the court can address the incongruity of the doctor's notes? they give a jury instruction that the jury gets to decide. Um, I saw questions about Elon Musk testimony. I don't think Elon Musk will be testifying. Um, I don't think he'll be testifying. He said that he wasn't. Um, so let me see. I'm going to try to get to like just a few more of these. I'm sorry if I miss them, y'all. We are trying. I will try to get back to them later today if I can. Um, yes, it has to be a unanimous jury. It's never too late to go to law school. It isn't ever too late. Um, I'm going to see if there's any other questions that I need to get. Amber Heard's emotions seem to have showed up after the new PR guy. Possibly. <laughs> That's possibly. Um, that will come up in Amber Heard's testimony today. And let's see if there's anything else that I missed that was a question. Um, and I don't see any. Okay, so with that... I am going to have to say goodbye for right now. We've got the link to the other stream. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being a Lonard. I will, um, I will see you in just a few minutes on the afternoon stream for Amber Heard's testimony. So everybody take, take five.
<laughs> Take five, Law Nerds. Thank you, Mods. I will see you back here in just a few minutes. Connect with me everywhere. I'm at the Emily D. Baker. If you guys want to join the text, just text emily.com. If you want to join the channel, lawnerdsunite.com. Happy to have you support what we do here on the YouTube.